We're back. We're we back. Are. It's May already. Can you believe that? It's already May. We had yeah. the air conditioning on here for we the did, last three hours. Pumping it seems like we air. missed the week. I think that's why it's May already. Somebody was uh somebody was in the hospital. Somebody was, yeah. Yeah, I'm feeling better though. That's very that's good. That's yeah, good. it was yeah. a it was a rough week. That week uh leading up to the missed podcast was not uh not a week I'd like to revisit. No. Let's just no, say no. I put that in the rear view mirror and I'm moving on. Um, I'm going to not dwell on that. And we're going to have a nice podcast in a week where I'm feeling outstanding. The week right, was outstanding. Yeah. It was. It was a good week. Your week was good too. Excellent. Perfect. No that's, complaints. That's, um, I'm sure your week was probably going good the week I was sick. But uh, it, yeah, was, it was difficult for you to be able to voice that with, Oh, for sure. With yeah. me not here, obviously. Of course, of course. They don't want to hear just you. No, it takes two here. It, it takes, takes two to tango. For sure. I let you lead, but it takes two to tango. I'm happy to be your dance partner, though. Thank you. Me too. It's yeah. nice to be back. It is. It really is. The yeah. markets have kind of just been treading water through this earnings season anyways. Yeah, not, not too much has been like going we've on. Like, really. we've had outstanding earnings throughout it. It's almost finished. Great the, earnings. Yeah, it's almost, almost finished yeah. being reported, but we... Um, we we still haven't had any market moves. It's it's still at that top spot that it's been at, right? Like it's still right around where it was at December, January. Right. But we're not getting a whole lot of moving off that spot. It's just it's very very toppy right now, and you see that yeah, with yeah. interest rates and the in the mortgages going up. And I mean the Fed didn't raise rates this time, but the Fed's obviously still going to be raising rates coming up. And oh sure, yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. I would say like one or two more hikes. Even even with the yeah one or two for sure this year, like yeah. I would imagine two probably in the second half of the year. It's one of those things where uh, you have to really blow earnings out of the water to really move the needle. I think you do, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is what it is. Um, so yeah, week was great. It's nice to be back, be yes. healthy again. Yeah. We're back in the uh, palatial estate that is our new studio for Wall Street breakdowns this week on Wall Street. Um, yeah, new studio for the second week. Second week of yes. three. Of three. Last yes. week I was in a hospital bed. That wasn't yes, as good of a look. No, I wasn't enjoying no. that look as much. No. I probably wouldn't have had a good podcast vibe. Well, of course. No, I think you would have been dying. I maybe. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was maybe pregnant. Turned oh, out. Oh, no. Turned out I wasn't. No? Okay, no. I got my period. I was about to give you congratulations, but <laughs> I'm Cody from Wall Street Breakdown. I'm Anthony from Wall Street Breakdown. I'll, uh, I'll let you lead this dance. Well, let's Come just, padre. let's lead into the markets. The Go markets closed uh, in the green this week. So mm -hmm. Why don't you give us the numbers? It's kind of flat, right? Right. Like yeah. it, it was it was in the green, but in the green by like a percent. Uh, Dow Jones, twenty four two sixty two. S and P five hundred two thousand six hundred and sixty three. Nasdaq seven thousand two hundred and nine. So the Nasdaq staying well above that seven thousand mark again. Mm -hmm. After they did dip below, was it like a month ago or so back below into this like six right, yeah. sixty nine hundred or so, right? Uh, TSX was actually up quite a bit this week. Fifteen seven twenty nine. The market's doing. It's uh, it's toppy. They're doing decent. They're not doing bad, but they're not doing. Too good. They're yeah, doing you're gonna have okay, to, right? you're gonna have to pick your winners. We they talked about found this. A safe space right now. I yeah, guess. we talked about this. Yeah, you got to pick your winners. This yep. isn't gonna be something where you're gonna be able to run with anybody that's in the middle of the pack. You're gonna have to find your breakout work. stars. Yeah, there's gonna be work and some yeah. luck, foresight, all sorts of stuff involved. Because while the market feels comfortable, it seems like being at where they're at right now. There's right, no right. there's no sell offs. There's no major play. And this is with. Obviously, rates going up, the tenure going right. up, you know, obviously interest rates going up. We've seen Bitcoin increasing again. That's we, right, right. Yeah. yeah. So there's been a lot of things that are creeping up as well, but the market seems to be able to be quite stable where they're at. And uh, the added EPS from the first quarter's tax cuts has definitely, I think, helped everybody. Everybody likes the extra little bit of money that's been going around. There's lots of share buybacks right, going right. on and companies are really putting that money to use. They're utilizing oh, sure. the fact that, they? yeah, the government is for capitalism in the United States now. Why not take advantage of that? Exactly. Moving over to commodities, gold, $1,314.70. Gold moving down just a little bit as gold just doesn't seem to really make as much an impact on the market. Not really, not anymore. As it no. used to, right? Oh, gold is huge. I, I know, right? WTI oil, 69.72 a barrel, which is strange because we're seeing production levels at record highs coming out of the United States. That's right, yeah. And the prices at the pumper are equivalent to what they were when a barrel was $115 you know, four or five years ago. And I don't, I don't make, that doesn't make any sense. I've heard, to me anyways, I don't understand. That I've kind heard of, uh, all sorts of talk of 
supply choke points and mm. issues with oil not being... Like my cousin's uncle, sister's nephew knows this. Well, Trump put that tweet out a few weeks ago, right, where he was talking about barges full, you know, sitting oh, in port right. not, yeah. being, not yeah. being emptied. And, I mean, you don't know what's just conjecture and what's actually the truth. Oh, for sure. But right. you hear this kind of stuff and you look at the numbers and you wonder, like, is, isn't production at, like, an all-time high? It seems like it. Thought like, so. Wouldn't you just open the faucets and let this stuff flow and make it cheap? But apparently, uh, on the retail side where we're paying for it, pricey. Very pricey. It's very pricey up oh, here yeah. right now. Uh, Bitcoin, like we were saying, it was closing in on 10000 yesterday. Uh, this being Sunday night, it was uh, 9500 roughly the last time we looked. Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah. about an hour or so ago. So the 9500 Bitcoin coming back, it was down to six grand area. So it's not like Bitcoin's not actually making a run. What any of that means, I don't know, but Bitcoin is... It's still far from the top that they were pe at. People, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I think that was, I don't know if this isn't overblown, but I think that was so far overblown, but there's clearly stability when it comes to the people that are staunchly in favor of Bitcoin. Right. There, yeah. are, there are enough people that they're going to prop this up at this price point, obviously, mm. because it pulled back and... The, the momentum seems to remain there, but obviously the fanfare across the mainstream media seems to have died down. I think that's mm -hmm. kind of what it right, is, right. right? Like the hullabaloo has died down. So many people lost or watched Bitcoin lose right, that yeah. I think a lot of people lost favor with it. But I think the cryptocurrency marks, the guys yes, that were in on marks, it from the yeah, beginning, yeah. the marks, those guys are believers no yeah. matter what. And oh, they're clearly sure. telling you that that's six grand area. They're, they're called leaders. Though. They're not uh, They're not okay with it being 6,000. So 9,500 right now, Bitcoin, I mean, you keep your eye on it. It's yeah, something. Watch it. I don't know what it is. I'm scared that the default in that marketplace is going to end up becoming the big issue in the economy and that you're going to have a lot of people that have a lot of money on the table that they shouldn't where mm. these type of currencies, these cryptocurrencies might be their only investments that they have because a lot of them are very cheap to get into and they move very erratically. So they're very right. exciting, right? It's not, it's one of those things I would definitely advise against. Um, in the rest of the markets, uh, the U.S. fixed income ETF saw inflows of $14.7 billion in April. That's the largest since October of 2014. Uh, the 10 year Creeping around 3% return right now, uh, the U.S. 10-year at 2.935%. Not not bad, I mean, but it seems almost justifiable to be there. Like, why why would anybody even buy the 10-year if you know you can just go to market and, right, and yeah. basically throw darts at a board <laughs> and make over 3%? Yeah. So with the darts being thrown at a board, somewhat being holstered right, at this right. point you can't throw darts at a board you do need to do some actual work at this yeah, point yeah. it seems like the 10 year just to be viable you know like three percent I, I, people get in a big big thing when the bond market moves and i just don't i don't see the economy or the stock market showing any any signs of being exhausted with where they're at they might be a little tired from going on the run they may not go on another run they may stay kind of put at this point but, I mean, the economy, you look at unemployment, where that's at. Oh, for sure. We're, we're talking about the, a pretty safe landing spot. If this is where you end up spending the next 18 or 24 months while the reshuffling of the deck mm, goes yeah, on, yeah. I don't think it's necessarily the worst thing in the world. Since you brought up economy, let's move right into it. So how do we fare this week? Well, the Fed met again. That's probably the big news, right? So I don't think anybody was expecting another rate hike this early. We're probably expecting, like I was saying, the other two that are probably going to happen are going to be in the second half of the calendar year. Probably we're going to get to that two, two and a quarter percent. But they were... The lending mark, mark right, right? right? So the Fed held the, the rate steady this time, uh, 1.5 to 1.75 percent is the range. It's, yeah, I don't think anybody... This, does, this can't make any news, right? Like, this can't move the needle at any point anymore. People know this is going to happen. We were at historically low interest rates right, for, right. A, you know, a oh, decade. I know. Actually, so, I've had a conversation with a few people who are actually surprised about interest rate hikes. And you're like, you should have been prepared for this. It's been so long since we actually had a big one or a big increase. People so, are spoiled. I think they are, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they don't have a lot of uh, ability to see things for no. what they are. They just know what they feel entitled to. Yes. Right? Like, the government's yeah. not going to be able to operate. They, we've been trying to stimulate the economy by allowing mm. people to, you know, borrow money at such a low rate. But at some point in time, the economy's been stimulated enough 
that a government, a United States government, running a deficit of something yeah, yeah. fierce needs to get. Now. Everybody needs to have the monetary system work to to even things out, oh, no, for sure. not to give leverage to either side. You only use the leverage to get back the it's balance. balance. Yes. That's the only time that you use it. So, um, yeah, the Fed held the rate steady. Nothing to change. I wouldn't expect any kind of. There's no gonna, not going to be any change in Jerome rhetoric's uh, or Jerome Powell's rhetoric. It's going to be exactly the way that he said it from yeah. the time he took the position from Janet Yellen, right? Like he right. knows what he's doing. He knows what he's expecting out of the economy, inflation-wise, which they hit, they hit that inflation target at two percent. They've been looking for. So you're going to get those rate uh, hikes. You're that's, that's going to yeah, happen. It's, it's going to happen. Second half of the year, expect two of them, right? Oh, for sure, right? Um... March pending home sales. Uh, you got the numbers for those? Yeah. Sure okay. So I got um, numbers for everything. Yeah, I got numbers for everything, bro. You Day want long. numbers? I got all these numbers. I you want, you want earnings? I got forty one earnings. Um, March pending home sales plus point four percent versus plus one percent was the estimate. So a little bit off there. As we see some stuff, especially in the home sales and all that everything's starting to slow down just a little bit as we get caught up from what was a flurry of activity things were great prices were still low the the rates um to borrow were still very cheap so everything was was working to people's advantages and now everything is starting to find find that balance like we were saying once again so a lot of these numbers that we've seen up 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 for basically the entirety of 2017 Oh, yeah. We're was, seeing down now time. three out of four weeks yeah. every time we take a look, or, or one month at a, every two when we look at a monthly statistic. So March construction spending uh, down 1.7% versus uh, up 1.5% was the estimate. MBA mortgage apps, the composite index, down 2.5%. Uh, the refinance index down 4%, purchase index down 2%, 30-year up to 4.8% for the lending rate. Uh, yeah, minus, minus, minus. It's a lot of downs. I mean, what can you say? You're going to expect that. The lending yeah, rate goes yeah. up. A lot of people have already spent their money. They've bought their houses mm. at this point in time. I think uh, I think we've reached the top and the sign is here that it's time to do some sort of reshuffling of your deck. Your, sure, your diversification sure, yeah. definitely in your portfolio needs you to have your uh, full attention on it at this point in time. Because there's going to be certain sectors that have been flourishing where you're going to notice a pullback. You see in the semiconductor industry, there's been nothing but talk throughout that whole industry at the beginning of 2018. And we talked about That's it in 2017. Right. Sure, yeah. But at the beginning of 2018, about <coughs> uh, the NAND flash memory, the DRAM becoming more and more easy to, to get. right? Yeah, more like, accessible. Yeah, yeah, and before it was more difficult. And now all of a sudden supply is up, yeah. demand is down, and a lot of these companies that were going on ridiculous runs... You know, like now things are having to pair guidance back because everybody sees that the supply from almost every company is caught up and now you're waiting for the next generation of stuff. I think for a lot of these things, you had your generational high, you had your generational run for a lot of uh, industry and now you're going to have to wait for, you're going to have to wait for winning companies and not entire sectors because, right, yeah. you know, sectors. It's time to pick the companies, do you think, than the sectors. Sectors. Huh? They were so oversold for so long that as they were coming back and the economy came back so strong that things were oversold. And I mean, sure, you could look at it now. And again, we've talked about this price to earnings being a little historically high. Um, you could say things are a little overbought at this point, but we're not sure that this isn't a new kind of a norm, that people might not be comfortable with PDEs a lot mm. closer to what this is now, and we might not just be forecasting earnings a little bit further out I into the future. I think Lloyd Blankfein said something along those lines in that interview that he had, and not too long ago, I couldn't remember who he was with, but he said something along those lines, maybe we're just at the new high or whatever. Maybe yeah, not, you know, no. like the people start to reevaluate the way they look at things. It doesn't always go the same yesterday as it does tomorrow. True, yeah. And the marketplace has a lot more access to information. I mean, you look at us doing this podcast, we have access to all this information. We have access to this information at fingertips in the moments that it's published. That's right. And granted, all this information is reactive, but all this information cumulative between companies and sectors and economies definitely helps you make the right decisions I think we may have moved on to a place where investors are a little bit more comfortable taking speculative risk, looking a little bit further into the future with a company than they maybe were before when news was a little less prevalent. 
It sure. was less at your fingertips at least. So we've then added this price to earnings buffer in and we've added an extra, you know, bit of leeway with right, what will right. allow companies to get w away with and still feel comfortable in regards to their share price, right? So I think things are changing, but I think when you look at these March construction spending numbers, the mortgage apps, the pending home sales, everything amiss, the ISM manufacturing numbers are down 57.3 versus 58.6 estimate, employment in the manufacturing sector down 54.2 versus 57.3. Prices are up though, 79.3 versus 78.1. New orders are down as well, 61.2 versus 61.9. So you look at manufacturing data, you look at housing data, it's people have, uh, people have seen the tops, it's tapering down, it's time to not, don't look at these numbers as negatives and look right. at it as a bad thing. Just look at it as a natural market adjustment. Like you'll never see positive numbers just go on and on into perpetuity like that's right. not it realistic. Can be 2017 every year right? it, oh yeah and <laughs> right? the thing is is when you're in 2017 i'm not sure if you even know it like we seem to know it it, it felt like we knew it by yeah. about october well, you looked at it every day well, yeah, when you right? live yeah. it you see a little yeah. more obviously you're a little more transparent for but, sure yeah, yeah than yeah. people who maybe are living on the sidelines but even like the historical data didn't become so beating you over the head until oh, about sure, October yeah. where you were just like, wow, this is unbelievable. What's going on here? Yeah, yeah, it's unbelievable to be in it. Uh, U.S. delays, uh, the United States delays tariffs on the EU, Canada, Mexico for another 30 days, June 1st. Uh, they're trying to get NAFTA done, obviously, steel, aluminum stuff. They're going to get a deal done, obviously, with the EU as well. They're not trying to implement these just like blanket tariffs. They're going to try to work together. For sure. They're trying to get this trade deficit down, and there's no other way to do it other than to have to go out there into the marketplace and redo some of your trade uh, agreements that you have. And right. doing it with this strong army tactic that Trump's doing it with. I don't see anything wrong with it personally. It's kind of setting the tone. He's doing it with China, with the intellectual property. He's doing it here with steel and aluminum. And, you know, like, the big concern is that a lot of steel and aluminum companies are seeing prices go up for steel and for aluminum, but they're seeing uh, orders or volumes going down because there's so many companies around the world that are able to make it where they purchase the... Uh, the actual components to make it for the same price, the market price, but their labor is so much cheaper okay, and they right, can make sure. so much more volume and then just go dump it at a cheaper price. And what they, they come into your economy and end up, you know, messing up your business. That's it's not fair because they're not playing by the exact same trade rules. Right. They're not playing by the same labor right, laws. Yeah. So you need things to be on a much more fair playing field. And I think the United States going out and, and dealing with this, but obviously giving a moratorium, on this going into effect, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Saying June 1st for EU, Canada, Mexico. We knew Canada and Mexico was going to get, they're going to kick that can down sure. the road till they get NAFTA signed. They've already got Argentina, Australia, and Brazil on separate agreements with the United States that's giving them either an extended period of time to figure things out or they're just working on a deal. But there's already been talks between those countries as well. So United States is definitely willing to work with. We've heard they've talked to South Korea. There's That's been right. there's been tons of talks with countries. They're just working out better trade. It's right. it's a it's a negotiating tactic. That's the only way that you can look at it. Yeah, that is the only way you can look at it. I think a fair even playing ground everybody should be Like I know right? I know uh, the US and China met at the end of this this past week here. And I guess both walked away saying like they haven't really made any headway with anything. Right. But it's the idea that they've come to the negotiating table. Oh, they weren't sure. at the negotiating table about these topics before. And some of these mm. topics need to find a resolution. The intellectual sure. property thing absolutely that, needs to find some thing, sort of... Yeah. Like if I you agree. want to be considered a first world country, mm. not some emer and you're not an emerging country anymore. You're no, a powerhouse You definitely world. are. You're our number one trade partner when you're talking yeah. US to China or China to the US you need to be playing on the same, you know, same playing field. Oh, for sure. It needs to be level. When I think of the big ones, it's the U.S., China, and Russia. Yeah. Those well, are the ones that I think United Kingdom, of. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But still, it needs still, to get, yeah. it needs to get figured out and a strong arming tactic while people like to, in the media, get all flustered because, I mean, you need something to talk about and when you, you dislike yeah. your, the person that's making the choice, it's a lot easier to get flustered about what they're doing. Oh, for sure, yeah. Because you yeah. just dislike them to begin with, yeah, right? It wouldn't yeah. make a difference. They could save a baby. 
and you'd be upset about it. That's very true. So, yeah. you know, like when Trump goes out and ruffles these feathers, a lot of people don't look at it as about time. But it gets them people thinking. Though, it's right? about time. Yeah. These things need to be fixed. You should not be the most powerful economy country in the history of the free world. Mm -hmm. At the very tippy top of your economy and, and uh, capitalism right now. Right. And have such a massive trade deficit because you're allowing everyone to get over on you. That's very true. It just doesn't yeah. seem fair. Like no, it doesn't. You're, all you're looking for is the fair shake. You're not yeah. right. You're not looking to get over on them. The United States has done more than enough bending oh, over for, sure, for a lot right. of people. We talked about how these companies put billions into this R and D, and then have you know a company yeah. in there take their you know steal their, the intellectual exactly, property, have right, a mole yes. from the company basically go in over the course of time or whatever and get. Yeah. research and development that took sure. years and years and billions of dollars a lot of the time and it ends up on the market over there and gets put into products and you, yeah. you have competition that's not paying for what they're actually using they're able to manage right, yeah. the money to manufacture it but it didn't cost them any money to go through the the ebbs and flows of the discovery process when you're exactly. actually making technology and that's not fair no that isn't that's no, just not, not so fair, fair. Uh, the March trade deficit in the United States was only forty nine point zero billion dollars, but that's not bad because the estimate was for fifty billion. Okay. And the previous deficit, the previous month, was fifty seven point seven billion. So the trade deficit, what we're talking about right now, yep. is actually going down. It's gone down eight, almost eight billion dollars, eight and a half billion dollars. So it's going down. It's making a move in the direction that Trump's trying to do it. For sure. I mean, we're not. We may be talking about a, an anomaly month, but I For don't sure, necessarily yeah. think so. To but be honest, still down I, eight and a half. You said. Yeah, down from fifty-seven point seven last month to still. forty-nine this month. So yeah, down eight and a half, eight eight point seven. So it's yeah. down considerably, and I mean that's that is, what you. Oh yeah. That's what you want to see is if he's gonna make a whole lot of stink about it. And he's already got a people, a lot of people that don't like him. He's really gonna have to have some proof in the pudding. The only For way sure, he's yeah. gonna prove to anybody that any of the stuff he's doing is viable when they dislike you as a human being is going to be through the actual action and the results. And I think like this number definitely says we're moving in the right direction. The well, economy's sure. in the right For direction. Sure. Stock market looks very stable. Numbers are creeping up on a lot of different things, mm. but the numbers were gonna creep up on a lot of things anyways. But on the overall picture, so I, how I many think, people do you think actually look at those numbers, Will? Well, I know I understand that yeah. a lot of people aren't really perusing these numbers on a regular. Like you're not doing the NBA mortgage apps yeah. every week like I am. But like I'm more looking for a trend than I'm looking for right. the numbers anyway. So when I look at these and I see the adjustment and I see that there's inter weeks where the adjustment is you know positive some weeks, negative some weeks. It's kind of correlated right. almost directly to the the thirty year hitting new highs, which it's hit a lot of for new sure, highs sure, in the last right. you know like ten weeks or so. Then I I find uh, you can maybe learn a lot more from the trend of looking at it than looking at it. But I right. agree that the masses probably pay no attention. To I, th it I think if the masses started looking at these numbers more in depthly or in depth, sorry, that. Maybe they wouldn't hate Trump so much. I think if you looked at the overlay of everything, looks like such an evil person. you don't yes. want to get too hung up on one thing because too hung up on one thing, things will look very skewed. But when you look at the overlay, there's yeah. too much positive sentiment to exactly. assume that you know the sky is falling. That's that's mm -hmm. the main thing is yeah. that we're both well aware that the sky is not falling. No, it's not. Despite no. what people in mainstream media might have you believe about Trump being in charge or how right. they might try to skew the news. Yeah. Yeah, every time something happens, they don't want to give the benefit of the doubt and assume that this is good political leveraging. They want to assume that he's a moron. I think he's doing a bang of job, personally. The economy says he's the doing a bang exactly. of job. Yeah. Yes. So, Red Book chain store sales up 3.5% versus 2.6% last week. April ADP jobs report, here's where he's doing a good job. Up 240,000 versus 190,000 estimate. It's nice for the jobs to be up. Initial jobless claims up 2,000. That's not too much, but still up. We don't like that. At 211,000, but the estimate was for 224,000. So it beat the estimate considerably as jobs continue to be a key talking point in the United States when you consider just where that unemployment rate is at. Uh, continuous claims down 77 grand at 1.756 million versus 1.833 million is the estimate. Isn't that what you like to see? It's beating the estimates. Well, There's jobs does, right? everywhere, right? Come on. April non-farm payrolls up 164,000 versus 189,000 estimate. Missed the estimate by a bit on that one, but unemployment falls again and finds itself at 3.9%. 
the lowest it's been since the year 2000, the millennium. I, gra really? I graduated oh, yeah. from high school that year. <laughs> really? I was a strapping, young, 18-year-old lad in the year 2000. Yeah. I'm still a pretty strapping young You are, lad. you yeah, are. Yeah, I'm yeah, doing yeah. pretty well for myself. Quite the looker. Unemployment, though, 3.9, looking better than I am because that means, man, there's options. And you got to yeah, love that. Yeah. This, I mean, this is the time. This is the place. This is where you want to be. This, these are the things that people talk about missing. And they, they tell people, oh, if only I was there, or only if I paid attention mm, at that yeah. time when things are right. Hey, well, man, these numbers show you. These you walk outside and find a job. Strike while the iron's yeah. hot. You could end up finding your, uh, your spot where you're looking to go career-wise. Where when options are a plentiful, man, you know, like you got to get out there and this is the time to make hay. Everything oh, yeah. is doing as well, as well as you could ever have expected. You could never put the expectations that things get this good. You know, like you want them to get this good. When they're this good, you, I think, maybe take it for granted a little bit. Oh, you definitely do. Oh, because it's a long road to get there. And I don't yeah. know if you stay there for very long either. But when you're there, I mean, 3.9% unemployment. I know. It's pretty tough for you to argue that you don't have a better chance to live the American dream. Oh, for sure. You than, can walk out your front door and find a job. Than where, absolutely. Or, or make employment at this point. Yeah, sure, it's yeah. tax friendly to be a, a corporation in the United States that's working right. in the United States that's right now. Right. That's for yeah. sure. Up here in Canada, we got one statistic the Canadian economy expanding. At a 3% clip per annum, uh, that was actually expected to be 2.8% was the estimate. 3% okay. economy growing up here. Is that all just the uh, real estate prices going up? Because uh, Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, the price of gas has gone up. <laughs> that's definitely gone up. I don't... Uh... I'll see uh, what else are we expanding on. I thought we had, we had decent earnings this week, last week from Canada. I don't know. There's not enough going on in Canada, I think, is our big deal. There never really is. We see things going up, but I, I don't see us branching out. Right. Okay. That's my big problem with Canada, is that I really wish, as a Canadian, I could get more rah-rah invested behind it. You know For what sure. I mean? Oh, like, yeah. emotionally Definitely. invested yeah. into things that are... Like a good, they're a good option to obviously put into your portfolio first and foremost because you're going to do your job properly. So you're, you're going to do the due diligence right. and make sure you don't just love it because it's Canadian or or it's For familiar sure. to you or whatever. But you'd love to have some things like options out of Canada, multiple ones, not just yeah. financials, where things are great and yeah. you love them and they're still close to home. And That's so true. But right now, I mean, it's almost impossible to not be mm. all in U.S. equities. I. I just don't see uh, yeah. a reason to be in the Canadian stock market. I can't think of anything. The slight little bit of tax break. Don't we have any uh, breweries in the Toronto Stock Exchange? I, can't, I, I, I mean, I there's know. a... there's. It's, we have Molson here, don't we? Molson, Molson Coors. Well, that's... I mean, that's a major company now, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I, mean, that's I just not, thought of that because we have the... Yeah, here, yeah. The, the, all that stuff is conglomerated, sir. The, yeah, these companies, right. this uh, Anheuser-Busch InBev and all yeah, these... Right. Everybody's got situation. together. Yeah, yeah, everybody's got together and made large companies. That's You're right. thinking of the 1980s beer commercials during the hockey <laughs> that game. That is right. Yeah, yes, I'm talking about the real world in 2018. Right. So I think Canada needs to find a little more diversification into industry that wows people... And has not only Canadians falling in love with it, but uh, but the internationally. I mean, Lululemon's doing a good job of it, but I mean, we just don't have anything else. Yeah. So when we see the when we see that the the economy grows three percent per annum versus a two point eight percent, you know, estimate, I look at that and go like, where's the growth? I don't right. see the growth in wages. I don't see the growth in employment. I mean, there yeah. may be some low end employment that's cropped up in the last year. Or so. Could be because yeah. we did see a lot of employment growth last year in Canada. We did. We did. Right. We've seen multiple straight months of, of plus employment growth, but I don't see a lot of it, especially in Alberta. I haven't heard anybody telling me of a giant employment boom no. that's allowed them to get back into their field of choice, which we know a lot of people here trained professionals that aren't in their field of choice anymore oh, because sure. industries dried up. So Canada growing. Uh, I don't know about that. I, I know. I'm very skeptical. I wouldn't put my money here because no, I don't either. see enough progress. I see Canada always being right. some a I, tag along. I really couldn't think of anything any, to invest my money into. In any, anything good that happens seems to happen elsewhere, and then we seem to get on the bandwagon six or nine months later. When, uh, yeah. yeah, we don't seem to be the, the people on the precipice of industry, yeah. which is 
makes it where again, when you go back to the idea where you're picking just best of breed, how do you then justify to yourself, I'm gonna pick this in Canada over this over here when best of breed exists 99 times out of 100 in the United right. States equities market. Like you might, you might be able to give me an argument why RBC or TD are a better choice for you than JP Morgan or Goldman. You okay, might yeah. be able to give me that argument because those for are sure, solid yeah. financial are, companies. Yeah, but when you look at it on a whole, you're going to be picking, you know, your diversification is going to be U.S. equities or you're playing a bias. And yeah. that bias is probably going to bite you in the butt at some point. For sure. Because you're not doing what's best for your portfolio. You're doing something that's... You're not doing your homework. You're you, following a stupid emotional... You're, you're having, yeah, you're having attachment because of where... We, I wish we had, up on something. Again, I wish we had more where we could be attached to it through a viable means where it's actually a good investment as well. Yeah. Unfor I, I unfortunately, Canada is... Kind of lacking there. Treading water, right? For sure. It definitely. would be really nice to see us break. I mean, it's great to say. It's easy to play oh, armchair quarterback sure, right? here. I, and I totally realize that. Like, <laughs> hey, Cody, why don't you go do it, right? Exactly. Like, good question. Because <laughs> yeah. it's obviously not the easiest thing in the world. But no, it's not, no. I think we do have uh, quite, uh, quite the eclectic group of people in Canada with a very accepting environment for all sorts of new innovative ideas and people. So I think we're definitely a melting pot that could bring on and, and uh, spurn on new ideas and new industry, but we just don't seem to have, I don't see the, the wheels really spinning much. Like it, it never right. really. I think we're still learning. We don't have those, those little entrepreneurs, those Elon Musk's or no, any, we don't, no. anybody that comes out of the, out from who knows sure. where that does things just amazing yeah. when they're young and they just seem to gain this steam. We don't. Well, population wise, we are very, oh, we're, very small. We're considerably right? smaller, but I would say on a percentage basis, I mean, we're definitely due. We're, oh, I think we're so. definitely yes. due. You know what I mean? It, yeah. it, it almost comes down to when you're looking at a percentage wise, the US couldn't have, you know, three or 400 really strong, tangible companies compared to our you know, 30 or 40. Yes, yeah. And then you tell me that it's not uh, a little disparity because they're just a little more aggressive in a capitalistic mindset. Oh, well, I know. I totally agree. Yeah. That. I don't think we're lacking in the skill set. I just think we're lacking in the, the go get itness. Canada's true American dream. Yeah. Oh, take what I, mean, I know yeah. Americans, right? Oh. I'm telling you, that's the way to do it. Yeah. You know, like every time people count America out, they count their economy out, their stock market out, they count whatever they start to count America out. America always just like that. Eagle. Yeah. They just, they're yeah, oh. Phoenix. They just oh, yeah. rise yeah. from it. Yeah. Right. Uh, Trump is such a good, um, composition when you look at what he's come back from and how many times America's come back from people saying that this is the time Rome's going to fall, right? America was right. They were too big for themselves this time. Mm -hmm. They always find their footing because they just don't take no for an answer. No, They're no, refu no. They refuse to stay down. They're very much a rocky movie. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Let's move on to some headlines. Uh, you have any juicy after stories we've for us? After we've dumped on Canada. Exactly. We've spent 10 yes. minutes dumping on Canada. Now you want to move on to some headlines. Sorry, Canada, but I, it's the truth. Yeah, I'm sorry, right? I yeah. like Canada. I do. We it's live a, together. It's a great right? country, right? Like... But it's, it's I'm not, not a huge, America, though. It's, it's, not it's the US. just not. They don't. We don't foster the same kind of mindset. No, we don't. And that's what kind of upsets me is that it would be nice if we had people that were a little more aggressive with sure, a, with a yeah. capitalistic demeanor. It just doesn't seem yeah. to happen. Headlines: Sprint and T-Mobile are they getting together again? SoftBank, Deutsche Telekom. Is it going to be? Is this it? This, this is time it. is this going to be the one? Apparently, it's an all stock deal. Um, 9.75 Sprint shares for every one T-Mobile share. Uh, John Legreer or Legray, the CEO of T-Mobile, is going to continue on being the CEO of the merged company, which That's is right. also going to go by the name T-Mobile. So I don't know what they're going to do with any subsidiaries that are named Sprint, if they're going to change it all over, if they're just going to be changing. With all the stores and stuff like that. Or if they're just changing the main name. Um, this is going to go through a regulatory purgatory, right? Well, it's going to be hung up for this a while. This is going to, people are saying 30, 40%, maybe That's approval was, chance, yeah. that this is not, this well, is the, not feasible at all. We talked about this. They're, they're worried about what the, what a 
competition and increasing uh, rates for uh, customers. Right? Yeah, okay. So never worry about that. Sprint and T-Mobile both holding 20 plus million in, or billion in debt. The, oh, yeah. These companies hold a lot of debt. Don't... I think it was like 60 billion in total. T-Mobile's been moving the last few years. Sprint don't move at all. Their earnings was brutal. Sprint is always... Yeah. They're treading water at best. When they talk about competition, there is no number five. There's no major number five. There's one, two, three, and four. That's right. Allowing yeah. three and four, Sprint and T-Mobile, when you consider that three, Sprint, is already teetering on the brink yeah. as it is, I don't see why you don't allow three and four to get together in a group where there's only four competing anyways. Make it three, but three all competing for the top. Right, right. You, I would imagine that the pricing structure, it, it's still going to be intervened by the government mm. if, if there's some reason that they think there's collusion for sure, yeah. to, to jack up prices. You know? I think a lot of people look at this as like, four is better than three. Now we're only going to have three. Maybe they're looking at it like that. Like we want more options. Now there's well, less options. Well, kind of cut out of those that. four, number three sprint is struggling and has been struggling for for ever. Right. Right. It's there's been nothing but problems there getting things turned around. And while they continue to chug along, I don't see this as being a I don't see this as being a hindrance in this marketplace. Yeah, well, neither do I, don't. We were talking about this, and I, again, I know there's a big investment going into 5G network and getting that all online. That's right, yeah. How all these companies are, and I think Sprint and T-Mobile getting together will make that happen a little quicker. They'll probably expedite that process. Oh, for sure, If yeah. they were together quicker, but they're going to stuck, be stuck with regulators dealing with that. Yeah. By the time 5G's already up, this deal won't even be done, right? Like, exactly, Because we know how yeah. these get hung up forever. But we were talking about this. These data companies that, that sell wireless, they're basically utility companies now. They're basically That's the people right. that sell you water. And when you think about it, I mean, you're thinking like, what are you talking about? Like, everybody has a cell phone. Everybody has a data plan. That's sure, right. you might add another device. Sure, you might upgrade or downgrade your plan. But as many people population-wise in the United States or Canada, and when we're talking about these companies, we're talking about the U.S., add into the marketplace is just as many people die off in yeah. a year and exit the marketplace. There's not really a big disparity. All these people are under contracts already. It's just the mobile utility. These are a lot more uh, a dividend type of company because you should be able to separate... If you separated a lot of the entertainment um, aspects of, a, of an AT&T and used just the wireless company as a separate company in and of itself, it would definitely not look be looked at as a growth company. No, because you're but you're going to be able to predict churn and all that within like a quarter of a percent right, right. for years to come. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's tons of things that's advantageous about that, but people need to stop looking at it like there's this vast competition. Between Sprint, no. there's no competition in telecom. Everybody, Everybody has, already has it. They already have it. It's yeah. completely flush. It's done. That's right. Yeah. Everyone has it. There's no competition left. You're picking up scraps at all times now. That's very true. Anything yeah. you're gaining is scraps yeah. because they're not international companies. These are companies oh, that run telecom based, yeah. out of the United States, right? Yeah. So the marketplace is completely saturated. But why not allow the companies at three and four, if you're really worried about competition, to compete with one and two? Because as of right now, three and four don't compete with one and two. No. And if they got together, the merged two companies would have almost as many subscribers as Verizon. Would they that was not? right. Uh, so yeah, it, the two companies together would have 127 million. Verizon has 150 million and AT&T has 144 million. So there you go, right? And so who knows if these guys, I mean, who knows if they're any better merged than they are on their own, right? That's so right. They, sure. they might be able to train wreck it this way too. So I'm not saying that it's the best thing for the shareholders, but I'm saying the marketplace and the idea that people are saying it's not likely to happen. And I kind of believe it's not likely to happen because regulators are just, they don't look at the big picture sometimes. And these aren't, this isn't an industry that needs 19 data providers in the United States. No, why do you need it's, that? Many? It's just a why? utility. It's yeah. providing the same thing we're all signed up for. Yeah. There's nobody you know out there in YouTube land no. where you don't know a person with a data plan and a cell phone. That's right. Right? Yeah. Unless it's maybe your little old grandma yeah. who doesn't, yeah. Or an infant. Yeah, you know, it's an, an it's it's those people. That, every that, teenager has a phone, Exactly, right? right? We're looking at these companies as the wrong thing. Streamlining that industry is mm. probably better than it is to continue to expand upon it. Like why? Why, yeah, the, that's the, right. These two why? companies are both treading water at best. 
let them see if they can get together and maybe get a little uh, tailwind and push through some yeah, of this. Yeah, exactly. Get their second win. Yeah. Uh, BASF wins EU approval for the Bayer assets they're trying to buy. Obviously, Bayer has been told by the EU of regulators, again, getting involved in stuff, that they had to sell off some of their assets in regards to some seed proprietary right. technology because they're trying, obviously, to uh, merge with Monsanto in a mm -hmm. $62.5 billion merger deal. But Monsanto and Bayer have very similar intellectual properties in the same market space. Yes. So the EU wanted them to diversify that out into the market. They made an agreement with BASF. Obviously, the EU looked at BASF's uh, intellectual right. property and said none of this really... You know, compounds on the stuff you've already right. got. This will be a good deal. So, uh, approval. So, does that mean we're going to get closer to Bayer I and Monsanto so. being done? Yeah, I think so. I would imagine, right? So, BSAF we're... took Bayer's uh, bioagricultural sector from them? Yeah, yeah. Yes. The thing that they were trying to pick up, that, right. yeah, absolutely, that's what got approved. Avengers Infinity War was the fastest to a billion dollars. It is one great movie from beginning to end yeah. action nonstop. It's three hours. hours. Pretty intense, yeah. I heard I heard it was pretty good. I saw it in three D, so Do a Th show. I thought Thanos was was awesome. He he definitely uh, had a presence on screen. It was pretty cool. Should I give spoilers? I know what happened. This is like well removed. Okay, well spoilers now. No, no, don't, don't, no, don't, don't give spoilers don't, to don't, people. Don't, yeah, no, don't give no. spoilers to people on here. Even though I would imagine a lot of people on here probably aren't too hung up on Avengers movies. Oh, probably not. If you're no. taking earnings advice from me on a podcast here on YouTube, <laughs> I don't think the Avengers movies are a big deal. But no. it's a great coup for Disney. For sure, I hear it's a phenomenal movie. It is. We were it talking really about the film industry a little bit earlier and how we think that uh, movie. We were actually originally talking about how there's no drive-in theaters. And how there should be a drive-in. It's a really good way to experience yeah. a movie. And then uh, we kind of we kind of expounded on that mm -hmm. and said that we feel like theaters aren't probably going to be around a lot longer in the same sense that they are right now. Yeah. That a lot of studios are probably going to streamline their uh, film production process into two completely different kind of avenues, where one mm -hmm. is completely geared towards keeping a good majority of your actors fairly cheap. That's not true, superstars right. because you're not all watching entertainment tonight. You can right. you can kind of muffle down people's celebrity a little bit right. because it's spread so thin nowadays, and make a lot of stuff for streaming content, and then make you know a couple blockbusters every year from sure. every major studio for more boutique theater yeah. viewing, where this where much like the D box and the IMAX are sure. very interactive now. You would get obviously bigger and bigger interactive experiences as time goes on. And you wouldn't have yeah. people spending, you know, twenty million dollars making romantic comedies that just break even and don't. Well, that, really... uh, that movie that Netflix made with Will Smith, Bright. Okay. And they already like green light the sequel for it. It was like one of the best like viewed movies or whatever. It's so a, it, it was like watching a blockbuster movie. It's, it's like a, with Will Smith. It had like it's a good big. Effect. It's it a awesome. big. Yeah, it's a big medium, right? Yeah. And they put a lot of money into their stuff. But it seems like the the theaters are gonna go. They're, they're definitely taking a divergence here right. in two separate directions where movies like The Avengers are an event. Yes. And then a lot of other things are things you could watch on your computer at Oh, home. definitely, yeah. And yeah. you don't need to go to a theater and they don't need mm. giant, the amount of square footage no, no. that they have and the overhead that it costs to run those theaters yeah. when you could uh, make it a much more quaint but exciting, almost the Universal Studios sure, type of right. experience tied into the movie where it's kind of funny that netflix is looking to buy like a theater or invest into theaters i wonder like yeah you wonder, it's kind of weird huh you hear netflix talking about buying into theater chains and you wonder like, yeah. isn't that backwards it is don't you already have all the eyeballs You've already beat them. and you have them in the comfort the majority, of their own home yeah. exactly. they have to leave to go to a theater yeah they can sit on their like device right at home and they're interactive with you instantly tablet phone anything right so it's yeah i wonder that was bizarre i think that's how we got on the whole theater thing that might have been how we got on. I was talking about that yeah, Netflix yeah. thing. So yeah, interesting stuff. Avengers doing quite well. I hear it's really good. Really good. There you go. Can't be that bad. Made a billion dollars. No, I, I like a lot of those. Definitely guys. recommend it. Yeah, I like a lot of the actors. Yeah, a lot of the guys playing the parts are well, really they had good. Everybody. In it. Yeah, oh, yeah, it, it looks really good. Uh, Twitter and Disney got together a little bit of a partnership to create live content and some advertising opportunities using uh, Disney's. Obviously, uh, intellectual property. We've used that buzz phrase a couple times here today <laughs> yeah. on the Twitter platform. So that's a bit of a coup for Twitter, getting a partnership with Disney. Obviously, Disney 
pulling away from Netflix recently as they move on right, that's true. to their own streaming service coming out. The ESPN one, ESPN already going here, but the, the Disney one coming next year. But Twitter, I mean, to get partnered up with Disney, there's never a bad time to have no. Disney co-sign what you're doing and say no. they want to advertise and make live original content just for your platform. Exactly. Twitter yeah. could definitely use any boost that they could get because they've... I mean, the the actual users, the hourly users or whatever you want, active users, monthly yeah. active users, whatever statistic you want to use has been absolutely flat at best at yeah, Twitter for, for sure, a while, yeah. for an absolute while. Yeah. And it's nowhere near as competitive as what people thought it would be with a Facebook, which has moved light years beyond where you would consider Twitter at this point. So any good partnership, a partnership with Disney at least uh, gleans off a little bit of that prestige onto oh, you. Oh, for sure. But on the flip side of that, Twitter later in the week says that they uh, uh -oh. they got a password storage thing issue, a bug that was data. It's was, always a bug. There was data <laughs> that was being, you know, you know, Cambridge Analytica and, oh, yeah, and okay. Equifax, and there was yeah. data that was, but... It's not our fault, it was the just a bug. The breach wasn't actually, uh, it was secured. Okay. Nobody got through, so no data, when they talk about it this time, got out. Right. But six months from now, we'll find out the data oh, got out. For sure, definitely. But we have so down. early in the week, they got a bump from the Disney partnership, and later in the week, they got a bit of a bump back, because nobody, right, and right now... This is not the time to be having data breaches. No, like, no. It's just come on. all over the news. People are so sensitive about their personal information, oh, even though they you should be. Though, they right? willingly put it into every field on every yeah, yeah. everything on the every computer, term every term without reading it. Yeah. You know, but they, but still, they'll be totally up in arms if it's lost by you. Yeah. You know, so it's not the time for Twitter to be doing that and building no. any goodwill. Exactly, so, But yeah. apparently, uh, no harm, no foul is what the report out of Twitter is well, saying. Let's hope so. Let's yeah, hope let's so. hope so. Amazon's adding 3,000 high-tech jobs in Vancouver. Uh, they're building a new tech hub that's planned to open in 2020, and they're adding 3,000 really high-paying jobs, everything from uh, e-commerce all the way through oh, guys really? doing actual, yeah, tech work. It's... Good for Vancouver, Amazon. Exactly. I think they already employ a few thousand people up here in Canada, but it's not too much. This is definitely going to, if not double the size of the workforce here in Canada, more, oh, sure. more probably, than double. No, I, I looked at it. I, I think it was around 2,000, but it's not too much as of right now. I wonder where all these Amazon employees are. Well, they're going to be Never. hired, obviously. Oh, oh right yeah. now, the yeah, Amazon yeah. employees that are here, I imagine they're probably working out of wherever Amazon has their... Uh, Little uh, hovels across yeah, Canada. Exactly. It's one of the main yeah, bases, yeah. right? So I would imagine it's probably a lot of logistics. Right. Because Amazon does oh, probably, ship all yeah. across Canada. And there is an Amazon.ca. So the yeah. reason why you're not actually talking about where they are. Maybe just somebody in shipping. In the sense or something. that it's a lot of probably people in the logistics field. Or talking on the phone or exactly, something. Exactly, yeah, right? Sure. But this is actually going to be a tech hub, which is going to be a big part of Amazon's think tank. Right. right? Oh, for sure. Amazon's yeah. going to be using this 3,000 fairly highly educated and well-paid uh, professionals that are going to be working for Amazon and Vancouver, British Columbia. So in Canada, little cachet for us. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful city for Amazon to set up uh, some it's headquarters. Set up some diversity a little bit. Well, it would well, be, nice. It. be nice if we brought our diversity to them instead of them having to bring their diversity that's, that's to us. Strange, but yeah. hey, a bow down to Jeff Bezos. Bring the diversity to Canada. Exactly. We'll take it, right? Like in mm. Vancouver, British Columbia, not a more beautiful place you could set up business. Well, sure, yeah. So I would imagine a lot of these Amazon employees... If, uh, if they think San Francisco is nice, yeah, Vancouver is equally probably as aesthetically pleasing. Oh, for sure, that's like the most film, <clears throat> most film city here. I'm amazed this is, that isn't kind of Silicon <laughs> Valley of the North, uh, but maybe kind of, yeah, maybe yeah. at some point in time it might move into that spot with Amazon moving into there. Uh, Boeing buys part maker KLX for 4.2 billion dollars. Uh, they're obviously an aerospace parts maker. The deal is contingent on the divestment of KLX's energy businesses. So, obviously, the deal's not going to go through unless KLS can find a buyer to get rid of the energy services business that they've got. And then Boeing's going to pick them up because uh, why have other people making your stuff when you can just take all their technology, pay for it, and make the exactly. stuff yourself, right? Apple, you should do that. Yeah, you shouldn't be making your own product. No, I don't, yeah. buy somebody that does that already. Yeah, you should stick to just using Intel's yeah. processors. Just design your phones. Yeah. And operating systems. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. but Boeing, they obviously know what oh. they're doing. Oh, sure. They're going to bring this in, bring this under the umbrella. This is going to be obviously the right move. But 
the idea that it's contingent on a few things obviously leaves a couple of hang-ups on KLX's part. So they obviously probably want to get this done too. For sure, definitely. So as fast as possible. We'll see if the deal gets done, but Boeing seems to always get their way. I would imagine if the deal doesn't get done, they probably find a new parts maker. For sure. Yeah, yeah they'll for probably sure. completely blackball these guys from the industry. <laughs> Hasbro paid $520 million because the toy industry is dying, you see. It is. Hasbro had a rough quarter last quarter. Obviously, Mattel going through nothing but issues. There's no merger on the horizon whatsoever between these two companies. Hasbro swinging at anything they can because that last quarter was brutal. Unforgi- it was out. unforgiving at Christmas time for Hasbro. $520 million deal with Sabin or Sabin Entertainment for uh, licensing properties, Power Rangers. Oh, Saban. Saban, is that Saban, what it is? Yeah. My Pet Monster, Popples, oh, yeah. among a few others. Um, it's not for, obviously, the TV rights. It's just for the licensing to make all uh, the, the goodies. Plush, all plush the goodies. Yeah, yeah. You can go out and make all the goodies. So it's under Hasbro's umbrella now. Will they be able to do anything and turn a profit with this? These sound like a lot of... Old brands to me. My Pet Monster from 1986. So you I know, want, and Popples. Popples 1986. Yeah, too, are sure. these not the 80s, uh, brands that have kind of run their course? Are they going to make oh, 520 I, million? No, they're not. No, no, no. I doubt it. I highly doubt it. People would buy it maybe for the nostalgic factor and maybe to buy their kids to see if they're interested in it. But I don't. I know. Think I know the, the money probably isn't there, and I don't know if the actual wherewithal is there either. Uh, but Hasbro is one of those companies where p- purchasing this is not a move that I would co-sign. They need to move into a different. Maybe field. they just have money to burn. But yeah, no, they don't. I don't think no. they do. I no. think they just don't know how to diversify out right. of this industry. This is the only industry they know, you know. And the idea that yeah. they move out to somewhere foreign seems like start moving to the movie department they, they need yeah, they need a game changer yeah. these two companies Mattel and Hasbro are both going to be gone and both all their trademarks and their yeah. yeah all their you know what I'm going to say all their intellectual property is going to end up being owned by some consortium that comes in buys Barbie and all this and yeah it's it's a shame. It is. It really they, is. They, yeah. they, these guys Hasbro has nothing to lose. They really got to go out and let it all hang and try to diversify that company into some other yeah. segment they never got into video games like mm-hmm. they were at one point were they not in the 80s did not hasbro dabble in the video uh, game they market? Did, and same with like in the mid 2000s late 2000s where they had like a couple of transformers games come out and but stuff like that see but. it seems like such a natural secession from the toys into the video games especially sure, as definitely as the one took the time from the other. Like, it was mm. almost such a handing of the baton where oh, it was sure, just went yeah. from toys to, oh, mm. the thing that we're going to do to occupy ourselves yeah. now, especially for younger kids, is going to be video games. So here's right. this baton, and Hasbro was just kind of like, no, we're going to stick with our archaic views. Mm. We're going to stick in the past here. I'm going to keep... If anything does happen to Hasbro, I think Disney might... Might save them because they do make a lot of toys for Disney. They do. Oh, all for the sure. Marvel, oh, Star Wars they're not going to. They wouldn't go out of business no. with all their assets. Just to, you know, going. Oh, no, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those assets are going to get bought up. It's just a matter of it's. It, Hasbro should thrive. You know, yeah, they've sure. been such a strong company. Like in, their intellectual pro again. I go back to this, mm. but just the brands they own. Like GI Joe. They've done Barbie. so much. It's not like they're not mm. very creative. It just seems like they've really stayed so in house and never branched out. Yeah. That now the industries have all kind of passed them by, and we're in a whole different world of technology. Right. And they're over there trying to start a fire with a rock and a stick, and yeah. it, you're you're looking at them going like, "What happened to you guys?" Like, you guys at one point in time were creating what people were, you know, like the the fantasy that was going on, you know, like you were the the imagination guys, and you guys couldn't keep up. They just, it's a shame. As a toy guy, I mean, we talk about this in vain a little bit, because we're toy guys, and it sucks. I mean, I'm a, yeah, for sure. I've owned 10,000 action figures Yeah, we had a toy store. Absolutely. So when you see this, and you know that it's the end. It's the end. It's the end. It's the end. It's like, just yeah. a matter of when, because there was never a divergence from this industry to anything else by no. either of these companies. The clocks are ticking, players. though, right? Yeah, the clocks it's, are ticking. It's definitely ticking. Absolutely. Uh, Abvi, everybody's doing well. Tax cuts. It's uh, it's a good time to be alive. Announced $7.5 billion in a stock buyback program. That's it. 
That's all. But they're, they're Abby all... doing well. Abby Good. Lab's doing well. Yeah. yeah, everybody's doing well. So Curing people, right on. Yeah, exactly. Right. Continue Abby's doing, doing, doing all the R and D. So yeah. they're out there, you know, discovering drugs and seven point five billion dollars uh, stock buybacks. Nice. Yeah, that's, what that's what not doing. even close to the biggest buyback we got this week. Obviously, no, no, uh, the no, one right. that was was pl- that everybody I think knew obviously is quite a bit bigger. Yeah. Uh, Facebook. Facebook is going to enable their users to see where and what companies have accessed their data and have access to it. And they're going to be able to make choices on if those companies um, are able to keep that data. If they block it from those companies, they can delete it. They can, mm. I don't know, turn the data into whatever they want. It's all, yeah. yeah, they're trying to give people all the options in the world because everybody's so concerned because they hit the I agree button with all the terms and services without actually agreeing. Yeah. They don't really agree. They just want to expedite and get to their thing, whatever it is they mm-hmm. want to play, and then they give their data to someone, and Facebook yeah. gets blamed for it because yeah. they're the platform. People know that that is a contract. So right? Facebook, you know? yeah, Facebook wants to make sure that you have access to do whatever you want with your data. All right. Well, yeah, do whatever Facebook, you want. Facebook, I guess, right? They came out at uh, the F8 Developer Conference, Zuckerberg giving, uh, giving one of the key speeches there. They've talked about the Oculus. They talked about a bunch of price points. They talked about the Cambridge Analytica scandal, obviously. They talked about something else, though. Moving into an industry I didn't foresee them moving into. That when I look at it, by default, it almost just seems like hand in glove. Really? You hear them say, we're going to do this. You remember how many eyes they already have on them. The attention... They, they have the attention of, of the masses. So on a pe- daily basis, people right? are drawn in. So you can you can interact on a, mm. on a very intimate level with people. They're going to get into dating. Really? On the platform, <sighs> on the Facebook platform, there's going to be some sort of dating app or extra little plug-in tie-in. Very interesting. How it's going to work was not disclosed. Other publicly traded uh, dating match uh, group, they were down considerably. Oh, were they? Okay. I mean, how many eyes does Facebook have around the world? You wouldn't need to be on Match.com or eHarmony if you were... If Facebook did this, all of a sudden, everybody that could potentially be dating is all together right. under one roof already there's no new sign up uh did they say if it was hidden behind a paywall or anything there was no there was nothing no, like that nothing just that said I've what seen. they were i would imagine it's hidden behind a lot of uh i don't know like how much anonymity is there going to be because like you're on one end worried about people's data and people's data right. getting out then you offer this service you're gonna start getting into that area where people that have things to lose mm. but go ahead right. and um maybe walk outside the boundaries of uh, good taste. Right, right. And right. then their data maybe gets lost and it does something, you know, oh, yeah. inadvertently to their life and now right. all of a sudden you have lawsuits. That's very true. Major yeah. class action. So I don't know what kind of uh, discretion they're going to allow right, in regards right. to it. Because it, you would imagine, I mean, it seems like such a natural fit. If they can make it work fairly seamlessly and I, I would imagine Zuckerberg's thought this through he wouldn't just announce it if he's just right. he, he's not just a guy to just casually throw things out there this is obviously a well thought through idea sure right if they can make this seamlessly they've got the attention of everybody this is all, right. this is by default new industry they just dominate just right. boom they open the doors and within well, this a might year, bring new Facebook users in as Facebook users have been dropping off for the past couple of years my it's only gone. the only people on my Facebook are like my parents and like my uh, cousins, I have like an old teacher on there. Maybe. I don't yeah. want to date my old teachers. No, so I don't, no, yeah. no. I just don't foresee this as being as utilitarian for me as it right. might be for other people. But um, yeah, the idea of having all those eyes. Mm, and yeah. I would imagine there's going to be, I'm, would there be a pay, pay structure? I don't know. I have, I have no have idea. With yeah. the advertising that they have. Well, a lot of things. Everything's a lot of these monetized. Things, right? so like, oh, you get a message. Oh, it's like you got to pay. But they probably don't have advertising. Message. Like, I, I'm not going to say yeah. where maybe you spend some of your cash right, right. time. <laughs> but do you think their scruples of, are, are uh, of the same uh, joie de vivre that a Facebook's are? So you can get the same kind of advertising revenue. I doubt it. So if right. you can just get all that ad revenue, you might be able to let your users. Uh, co-mingle for free exactly yeah, yeah. but who knows what kind of uh, issues that might yeah yeah. yeah yeah i could see it being issues 
It's going to be fun to watch it play out. It, it's a good industry. It is. It's just very... I'll have the, to see how, how it the, does. Yeah. The, the easier and easier they make it for people to, uh, to get together, the more yeah. likely people are to get together. But the more headaches a lot of times that come from that. So... Who knows? From getting think, family and friends together, getting strangers together. Who knows? Who knows? Facebook, you know, they know how to bring people together. That's very if true. anybody knows, Zuckerberg knows. That's maybe, very true. Maybe, yeah. uh, maybe he can find your uh, your one and only. My one and only on Facebook. There you go. <laughs> Incoming chief at Nintendo wants more mobile games. Does he know? Nintendo, not really known for the mobile games. Pokemon Go, obviously, really successful. He yeah. wants more video games that are um, that are that are gonna be you know awe inspiring. Right. He wants the Nintendo brand to be right. associated with mobile. They're making Nintendo's mobile game business into a nine hundred and ten million dollar division. Oh wow! They are focusing extensively. As he comes in, he said this is the thing he's focusing on the most. Right. As he feels like the good majority of. Uh, of eyeballs have gone to the device in your hand, much like the data guys are a utility. Anthony, definitely, definitely. Where, what video games do you play right now? Marvel Strike Force. I play Marvel Strike Force as well, and we play it daily on our phone. On our phones, tablets. I don't yeah. own a television. No, me. I don't own a console. I don't have video games. No. But it was very casual, easy to download. Yeah. It's very it's a good game with, you know, like characters that I, you know, can relate to that I know. It's not something yep. I have to learn. It's very easy. Nintendo has very much that same uh, ace in the hole. It might be the right idea. It right might be the right move. How many might people be, yeah. are gonna stay tethered to their TVs? And Nintendo's already mm. gone as far as they kind of yeah. can. They've already showed that they're strong, but they're a strong number three. Yeah, They're not on that same level where hardcore gamers look at yeah. them like a PlayStation or an Xbox. They're on that casual game. They're, yeah, they're, they're very, not hardcore. They're a casual mobile gamer. They're, kind of very, right? they're very quirky for all the brands for they sure, have yeah. and stuff, but... I think mobile gaming is definitely the other than other than the esports. Mm. I would imagine the easiest thing to uh, keep people's attention is the thing that's going to be always in front of their eyes. That's very which true. is their device, right? Yeah. It's always in front of my eyes. It's yeah, a good way to get yeah. my attention. Exactly. Rusal over in Russia having nothing but problems, obviously, with all these steel tariffs. Rusal's basically been blacklisted. No more. Uh, no more futures trading for Rusal. They're getting delisted from the London Stock Exchange this week, but apparently the U.S. is going to give them a bit of a moratorium on complete exile from the steel business entirely. Now, we've heard that Russia is obviously going to step in. They're kind of already government. They were government subsidized to get started and all that kind of stuff. We understand how that stuff works over there. Right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's very... Uh, it's very murky water. So when I say we it understand, is, yes. I mean we all understand that it's convoluted, but none of us understand what they're doing. But they're all, everybody's in everybody's pocket and everybody's, you know, paying back the favors. Yes, yes, exactly. So Rusal has been dumping a lot of steel, making it cheap, dumping it into yeah. places, into economies, bringing the price of steel overall down. They're obviously the main one outside of China, the, the main uh, steel supplier to the world outside of China. So Rusal, they're, they're on the precipice of this blacklist. I'm not too sure what the White House is giving them an extension for or what the like what what, what? are they gonna get in what? order? Yeah. Maybe Russia as a as a government is going to make some sort of agreement. Maybe, yeah. Right. And that would be understandable. But like we've we've said before, like all countries in the WTO have the right to refuse loads that show up on their ports or at their borders. Mm -hmm. If it seems like dumping, if they feel yeah. like this, whatever this is coming into their borders is gonna start affecting their economy in a negative sort of way. So Rusal's pretty much in a rock and hard place here. Everybody in the WTO is going to be not dealing with them. Right. They're sure. not going to have a lot of places to go with this out, outside of dumping it for pennies on the dollar. They're going to have to start playing ball. Yeah. Yeah. yeah start playing nice. The hard ball fair. around global trade this year is pretty outstanding. A lot of people, I bet you probably don't pay attention because it's pretty like when you're an outsider and you hear about, you know, global trade, you know, geopolitical uh, agreements or disagreements and tariffs and all this kind of jargon, you probably get, you know, pushed back a bit and go like, that's kind of boring. But in reality, all the way it's playing out between China, between these steel tariffs and aluminum tariffs, the stuff with Russia, the very hard lines that we're taking with a lot yeah. of people, 
there's a real shuffling of the deck going on in this little piece of time in the world. Definitely and a world changer. I'm telling you, we're watching a couple of the uh, first dominoes fall down in what could be a real chain reaction where America might be able to write the, not only write the ship of their economy and their marketplace, which is fine now, yeah. but write the ship of their actual government that's been running a deficit for so that's long. Right. It really shouldn't be. No, not There's, when you're like the leader of the free world, basically. You should not be running a deficit. There's right? really no call for it, right? Other than yeah. you just have a whole lot of really poor agreements out there in place that you really haven't, you know, yeah, nobody's kind of really... Walked on. Yeah, you're kind of getting walked on a little bit. You obviously don't have enough eyes on the ball. Trump seems to be doing a good job getting the eyes on the ball. So Rusal getting, yeah, the little bit of leeway right now. But I would imagine they're probably not at work. Or yeah, anything. they should be doing yeah, something right now. They're probably trying to figure out a good way to uh, backtrack as much as possible and appease the uh, yeah. U.S. overlords. Kiss that, them behind. Yeah, because getting delisted, I mean, all, already that is. Oh, that's. Yeah. Yeah. You're, yeah, you're dying. You, you've just out. been excommunicated. Yeah, yeah. Your phone number got blocked. EU regulators have given conditional approval to United Technologies and Rockwell Collins deal. $23 billion uh, merger between the two companies would be the biggest in aerospace history, as there's not a lot of aerospace companies. We talk right. about we talk right. about Boeing uh, buying KLX for four plus billion, but it's yeah. a parts company. There just isn't a lot of aerospace companies. So the idea that some of these big ones are gonna merge is not likely Rockwell. I mean, it was right on that that uh, level of almost being considered one of the big players. That's right. So for them to go with uh, United Technologies, this is a big move. Twenty three billion, EU regulators and uh, and United Technologies have come to an agreement that they're going to sell some assets, but we haven't come out with what assets. Okay. So there hasn't so been, there hasn't been an offer from from United, even though they've said they're willing, right. and there hasn't been a proposal as to what it should be. From the EU regulators, even though I think we both know that if any kind of stuff starts to cross over too much, yeah. they're going to make them choose one division or the other from one of the two companies and mm -hmm. going to have to put the other one on the open market just to appease people because regulators. This is of the course. fourth time we've talked about regulators. Hulu, 20 million US subs, 3 million ads in the first quarter of 2018. Netflix only added 2 million in the first quarter of 2018. So oh. Hulu added an extra million. Now, granted, Netflix has a much bigger customer base. Right. So, I mean, Netflix already has a lot of people under contract. They're already subscribers, mm. so they're not going to add at the same exponential number that a newer company might. Hulu, obviously, co-owned by Comcast, Disney, Fox, Time Warner. Yeah. Everybody's in on Hulu. But Netflix, when you consider subs, 55 million for Netflix. So 20 million U.S. subs, Hulu crosses. They're definitely gaining some traction but there is just so many streaming opportunities out there that I, uh, it's it's difficult yeah. to pick the the also rans right. because when you compare apples to apples between Hulu and Netflix, there is just no comparison. No. I'm actually looking forward to Disney streaming services coming out. I want to see all the Star Wars shows that they actually have in the works as we speak. There's tons of them right now. I can see like a bunch of movies going straight to their streaming service. Oh yeah, theaters. I heard they're gonna have like a budget for motion pictures every year, right? Like so, there's gonna be some blockbusters yes. on just the streaming service. Just the streaming service. service. Yeah. yeah, I read that too. Yeah. So it's gonna be one of those. It's conditional to you having the streaming service. You're exactly. Gonna, yeah, have to be a participant. Mm -hmm. But a Disney streaming service, like I, I have two kids. I have two young kids. I don't have a television, but I have tablets and devices. And all sorts you just of download the app or whatever. And yeah. it seems like that would be even for me. Like I have Netflix, right? Right. That seems like it would be a decent investment in twelve or fourteen dollars a month, whatever it be up. I don't know what yeah, it is sure. in Canadian igloo money. You know, it might, <laughs> might be yeah. fifty bucks. Yeah. Right. But I think it would be a good investment because my kids, you, you know, Disney, you're going to get good quality. Oh, Marvel. It's yeah. There's yeah. a lot of stuff that I would even kind of halfway be interested in. So when you deal with these other smaller streamers. So you're like, yeah. I mean, what can you do for me that some of the other guys can't? How am I really gonna get my money's worth? Yeah, like you or yeah. a big company like Unless Disney, I'm one right? of those people who really just enjoy entertainment, just and I allocate TV, yeah. fifty dollars or sixty dollars a month to two or three of these different subscriptions, for sure. Because they're all they all have original content that I enjoy. So maybe you have the Prime subscription, right. you, you've got Apple's subscription, you've got Hulu, you've got Roku, you. You've got all this different stuff, maybe then, but I think a, a lot of the time when you're going to end up asking people to choose one or two, 
You got big names like Disney, Netflix. People don't aren't used to paying 140 bucks for cable anymore. Cable's no, dead. Yeah. There's a reason I have no cable. It's not because I live under a rock. It's no, because really. I don't need to pay for cable. No, for Anything what? I want to watch is available. It's exactly. out there in the ether. I'm not sure if people... Yeah. It's up to your fingertips. It's out, there. it's out there. You don't have to pay for stuff. Not that stuff. No. So no. these other companies, I mean, the growth eventually caps out, you imagine, and one guy really takes over, or a, 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 a small grouping. Mm, Netflix, right. obviously, on the forefront of that. And then when you consider the people who have money for original content or are going to focus fire on their product, sure. you think Amazon, you think Apple... The money's mm. there. The money's going to be allocated to original content. I mean, I know Hulu's partnered up with all these uh, these big companies, right. but I mean, when you consider they're partnering up with Disney and Fox, right. well, are Disney and Fox really going to be allocating better stuff to Hulu than they will to their own, you know, their own? No, no, no obviously their own they're going to. Gonna... Time Warner obviously is going to go to feed into the new AT and T stuff yeah. that's going to come out, and obviously probably get partnered up with uh, Direct TV over at AT and T if that, if that though, goes right? through. Yep. I mean, that leaves you with, what, Comcast to feed you with new content? Really good, solid oh, new content? Because I would imagine some of these companies that own this would was like have a, to own Was HBO owned by? HBO? Was it Comcast? I can't, I can't remember. I'll look at them. Yeah. yeah. IDC smartphone right. shipments in Q1 as you think about uh, who owns HBO over yeah. there. Yeah. Find oh, out who owns I HBO. I will. I'm actually wondering. I've never, I've never had HBO. I've downloaded The Sopranos. Yeah, me yeah, too. We yeah. don't, do we get HBO up here in Canada? Obviously, I'm a little off base. Because I don't watch TV. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I have no idea. I have no idea, dude. I think of it as like an American sort of a company, right? Right, yeah. yeah, Very much exclusive. Them and Showtime to the American uh, populace. So, Q1 for IDC smartphone shipments 334.3 million units. That's a lot of smartphones shipping around the world. Like we were saying, everybody has a phone. And uh, it seems like 334 million of them were re upping their phone this month. Uh, on HBO Q1. is a time is a Time Warner. Oh, okay. Yeah, so there so you go. There so going to move AT&T. would move over to AT and T if yeah, it sure. uh, goes yeah. through. Samsung was twenty three point four percent of the world's share of smartphone shipments in Q one. Oh, wow. Yeah, but but let's but, not get ahead of okay, ourselves because okay. first off, they didn't release a new phone in Q one. That's the the new phone. I mean, it came out at the very very beginning of Q two. I think you'd consider it maybe. Maybe late Q1. They've got the new one now that just came out. Pre-orders were last Monday. I believe it started shipping maybe this week. But that's the new one with the bigger one. It's got 128 and 256 as opposed to the smaller gig versions of the of the S9s. So they've got the bigger phones out coming out right now. But they still at 23.4 percent of the smartphone shipments in Q1 were down 2.4 percent themselves losing a little market share and when we mosey on down to whoever's in number two now you remember for a very long time in smartphone shipments people would be under the impression that apple is number two but hawaii was number two for a very long time they sell a lot of phones obviously through europe through asia they, uh, they own a lot of market share in the smartphone yep. industry. Apple, though, in number two in quarter one, 15.6% of the market share for smartphone sales. And that's up 2.8% for Apple. As uh, a lot of analysts going into their earnings, obviously, this week had you know shipment expectations right, yeah. geared way down because... Taiwan Semiconductor and stuff had come out and said that's right. some of the you know things some of the smartphone shipments weren't where they were uh, expected to be. Obviously, that wasn't tied to Apple. As no, they, no, it wasn't. They no. blew all those analysts out of the water. There were analysts during the week after Apple reported their earnings that were apologizing for being wrong. Like they actually yeah. came out. I seen. I'm well, you just sorry. Assumed. You just assumed. Well, they they said you know it was. It was directly correlated to looking at the people who build components saying that shipments, mm-hmm. shipment volume were down. Order, right. order volume was down. I understand that, but, you know, when you just point fingers without... I could do that. I could do that easily. Clearly it wasn't Apple that yeah. was doing... No. Because yeah. Apple gave their guidance through Q3 and Q4 stayed the same. Yeah. There was no uh, hiccup. Whereas analysts said they needed to gear back that guidance big time on, on smartphone sales. Apparently, the iPhone X is selling outstandingly like because, yeah, 2.8% growth in the in the market space for shipments in Q1. 
pretty tough to argue with that. Not too bad. Not too bad. You know what I'd like? Samsung, I need a new phone. The S9 would be nice. I need them to come up with a new tablet. I mm. wish their tablets weren't so far like technologically behind their phones. They For put, sure, yeah. put a lot of effort into their phones. Samsung doesn't do tablets near Tablets like a few years. Their ta and their tablet is not near uh, as good, like just component-wise. For sure, yeah. When you yeah. take top-of-the-line phone and even when a tablet is newly released, it seems like the phone is always... Still a little head and shoulders above the tablet. Just off, sure, tablet yeah. just offers you a little more square footage. That's probably it. Only yeah, from Samsung, screen, right? Yeah. From Samsung. I guess the the tablet market is just kind of a niche market. Right. Yeah. One of those things, eh? It's just. I think so. Yeah. I, I guess I'm a niche user. I like the tablet, man. What, Me too. I got a uh, the what's the iPad? Is that the the Apple one? The iPad. Yeah, it's the iPad. Yeah, years ago, like when they first came out, it was the perfect mix of laptop and cell phone. Right. Like it was right there in that sweet spot. Yeah. Like I'm a big dude, right? Like I'm a, so I've got a little bit of space on my, you know, chest sure. to let something, it, but the laptop gets a little cumbersome. Oh the yeah. Tablet for me is money. I don't, need to, I don't need to play any video games. I no, just like no. the tablet. So, um, yeah, Apple doing really good. Taking the market share. Goldman is opening a Bitcoin trading little, uh, operation. Let's, let's call it that. They're not going to let you trade. Well, they're not going to let you trade because they don't like you. For sure. They, they told Why? me. Why but they? they're not going to let anybody trade with de their own money. They're not going to let investors come in and trade through a Bitcoin platform. They're going to use their own capital. They're going to be buying derivatives, not the actual coins. So I guess they're more doing a bit of an experiment as they're buying the underlying contract for the asset, obviously not the asset with the derivatives. They're going to, I guess, figure out if they can see what the market is like, get a little data on it. Maybe just try to be active in it. I, I don't, it's obviously just, you know, you're testing out everything that's new. You might as well do it, you right? You need to put your toe in the pool. Yeah. I and mean, I know they've all acknowledged it. They've all acknowledged that they don't, all the big banks, all the CEOs have all come out and acknowledged that they don't believe it's really anything. But you'd hate to be the guy who says that and then does really nothing about it. Sure. And then it takes off. And then something we don't see, it actually yeah. does become. And you really look like you you just weren't pursuing it because you were stubborn. Like you've right, got yeah. the money, the money's there. You really should allocate it to figuring out everything in your industry that's, you know, bubbling. Why, why, why not? Even if you don't agree with it, which I yeah. don't either, you might be able to find out something that you can deem as useful. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. So Goldman pursuing Bitcoin, spending their own money. So like, I don't know, Lloyd Blankfein probably dropped like 50 bucks and was like, buy some Bitcoin derivatives Lost or something. Lost a bet, first I find a buy it. Call the CBOE, yeah. <laughs> buy something. Uh, Google Assistant, so this is obviously the assistant that's on the Google smart speaker, Google's a lot of Google platform stuff. Now, we've got a lot of these smart speakers. This is an industry, obviously, it's gonna take off and it's gonna become unbelievably huge. I mean, I, I don't think there's any uh, argument about this it's going to control so many different aspects of your life the idea that oh, sure. you're going to have everything tied in to you being able to basically ask out loud for something to happen and it's going oh, yeah. to happen right you're not obviously going to be able to have anything go to work for you like michael keaton and multiplicity had his like uh, doubles go that's to work right for you. but you're going to get to have your microwave turn on or you're going to sure. have your oven preheat or your temperature change at home or your doors lock or whatever it happens to be and you got that now with a lot of companies google controls over 5,000 smart devices with their assistant. They've added 1. Uh, 1 1,500 since the, the end of 2017. Amazon with the Alexa, yep. the, the Amazon smart speaker, obviously, 4,000. So they're a little less than Google. 5,000, 4,000, a lot of devices. They're yeah. working with every manufacturer they say they can get their hands on to try to get everything integrated so it's very easy, right. plug, play, everything's connected. Apple, Samsung, very proprietary, 200 device makers or smart devices each only. Really? That they're compatible with. 5,000 from Google, yeah. 4,000 from Amazon. Yeah. And I said this before, I remember talking about this, man, six months ago when we were talking about Apple's home coming out and I said, they're pretty proprietary. That's right. Are they really going to be able to work with all these appliance companies and stuff and allow and people friendly. in? They don't really no. allow people into their stuff. You have to be Apple only a lot of the time. You're either Apple or Android. That's it's, really it. They, they cause, a, they're, they're very polarizing. And you can tell 200 that mm. either they're trying to get it so right that it's perfect, 
But I can't imagine that when you think Google's doing 5,000, that Google's doing it poorly. And we know Amazon's yeah. doing no, outstanding. Sure. That thing's selling great, doing yeah. excellent reviews. And they're hooked up with 4,000 devices out there in the free world, right? So Apple and Samsung lagging behind. But Google, very proud of the fact that they're trying to get in business with everybody possible right, yeah. so that they can make this as seamless as possible when you buy yourself a Google uh, Home smart speaker. I wonder what they're going to bring to the table next generation when they bring out the new one of the smart speaker or the Alexa. I'm still trying to get my typewriter set up. I keep getting my paper <laughs> jammed and like, so like I'm working on one thing at I'm a time. Fixing my DeLorean. Typewriter now. first and then I got the shoehorn last year for Christmas and I'm going to figure out how that thing works. It looks, it's, it's it looks. One thing at a time. Yeah, it yeah. looks fairly delicate. One thing at a time. Amazon, we've talked about this, man, this story came out this week and I, I don't know why I never thought of this before, because we've talked about what's like the one thing that Amazon, other than maybe the lumber business or whatever with Home Depot, what's the thing that Amazon's not going to be able to get into? Like that's going to be as successful as it is when you're live in a retail store. Clothing. Well, that's, because you that's walk in true, and you yeah. try on clothing and it, and it fits a certain way. Mm. You know, like you can buy as much clothing online as you want, but the fact of the matter is, is you have to walk into a change room with a mirror, do a yeah. couple of squats and a pair of pants, feel how something feels, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's just a feel, Every, and everybody knows what I'm talking about. So we've always said, like, Amazon's going to have a tough time encroaching on business like Home Depot's business. Right, right. Because the shipping is just logistically impossible. And then the clothing business, while it'll always be there, and a lot of people know their sizes and are very much willing to just, you know, take right. the chance. It's very easy, return policies and all that stuff. It's never going to be the same as the experience of going into the mall. No, no. So Amazon has a pilot project going on in New York called Better Fit. It's a 3D body scanning operation for buying clothing online. Now, the participants in this are going to visit bi-monthly over the course of a year right. to see how their body compositions naturally, like a large group of people, how body compositions change over time as well right, okay. to, to be able to accommodate changes that people have in their life right for you, sure because yeah. you're gonna have all these fluctuations so they want to see some, so they're doing all this testing gathering all this data um, they're using the acquisition of body labs that they bought last year as the company that's doing the majority of the uh, they've had the technology to go ahead and do this this is a great move for Amazon I think so, like, yeah. As far as that retail space that they're in, they've really covered pretty much the gamut. Like, they have more landscape they could cover as far as the world goes. Right. But as far as um, in the Western Hemisphere, I mean, they've covered the gamut of products and there's no really where to go. But yeah, this totally. adds a whole new spin on clothing purchases because now you can almost assure yourself that if this works out, your clothing purchase is going to be perfectly fit to you that's true, yeah. because everything's going to go through this 3D scanning program yeah. that's going to make sure that everything fits not in accordance right. to what a measurement says, but in accordance to how that actual garment fits specifically to in all the scan, yeah, yeah in the full dimension of your body, right? Because right? right? I mean, I I think that's the one thing that was holding Amazon back from really crushing a lot of retailers in clothing. Oh, for sure, if yeah. This gets yeah. off the ground. Everybody who's participating in this gets a two hundred and fifty dollars Amazon gift card. Nice. Buy. I think every time you show up, too. So buy monthly for a year. That's six times. So I mean, no if you're doubt. in New York, Do go, go look Do up it. Amazon's yeah. uh, offices and go ahead and sign up for this. Right? Yeah. They want participants. That's what the press release said. So right. they want people to come and partake in this. And why not get the two hundred and fifty dollars gift certificate? For sure. And, I imagine this is just for, for the U.S. And right? further, yeah, you got to be in yeah. New York, right? right. So and yeah. further on the technology that's uh, ultimately gonna help us buy better jeans bro for sure yeah i can buy cheaper jeans on the internet but i gotta buy them at retail because i have big uh childbearing hips you definitely I, do so yes. i have to go yeah childbearing hips sir uh at&t opposes the department of justice demanded divestitures of assets they want some direct tv or turner assets removed from this deal between at&t and time warner Oh, really? no. AT&T said that completely devalues the whole purpose of this deal and what it brings back to shareholders. They have no intention of agreeing to uh, any divestitures at all Not of enough. assets. They think that they've got a good case. They think they made a solid case in court against the Department of Justice. I would imagine this is a wait and see thing. And personally, if the testimony that has come out, everything that we've read and just the... Um, just what would seemed like the attitude of the judge by the end of this really seemed like it was kind of leaning in favor of AT&T. 
that the Department of Justice really doesn't have, they, they don't have a lot of the uh, fear-mongering that they're doing. They don't have any facts to back that up, and there's no historical body of work to say that what's going on is necessarily anything negative. So it's right, impossible right. to pin it on something from a pre... Because this is brand new, so you kind of... You, you sometimes have to just let things play out. And I think, like right. we've talked, the S&P 500 is merging those two sectors, the telecom and, and media sectors, because That's right, yeah, yeah. they're becoming pretty blurred anyways. Mm. So, I mean, this, times are changing, this seems yeah. like a natural coupling. Yeah. yeah. So I don't think at and is going to have any wiggle room. They're not going to give any with these divestitures that the Department of Justice either. wants. And... At the end of this trial, I'm expecting AT and T and Time Warner to be, uh, yeah, to be working on their 85 billion dollar oh, deal, definitely, and trying to find a way to compete with Disney and Netflix and potentially a T-Mobile Sprint merger and all sorts of different things that are going on. There's so many things going on these days. Telecom's been interesting for like a year for, yeah, for an industry that doesn't really do much. Like their earnings are no, boring. Really, yeah. Years, you know, a lot 100%. of drama that kind of goes on. Though. Yeah, a lot of drama. Well, they all know. You know, it's. It's like what we're seeing up here with the, the marijuana industry and the consolidation ah, right. of a bunch of different people buying companies, architecture companies, companies that make right. lights, companies that do fertilizer, companies this, companies that, because there needs to be consolidation. That industry is just getting started, so companies are trying to become obviously the leader, and in this industry, that industry is absolutely stretched to the maximum that it can be. So right. they're trying to diversify outside of it, so I think that's just what we're seeing is a consolidating of industries that have kind of the media industry right. and the telecom industry have kind of reached both of their growth potentials in a right. lot of in a lot of manners, right? Like maybe not every individual company, but overall it's lost a lot of its growth potential because it's sure. they're totally saturated. So di diversification is probably the only way that you can branch out and find new mediums to bring in revenue. Probably is. You gotta, you gotta yeah. find a way for revs to come in. Oh, right? for sure, right? Else, yeah, you're not doing anything. You're just treading water, waiting to die. Starbucks, speaking of which, not doing the greatest. Treading water, waiting to die. I don't think that that's necessarily the case, but definitely traffic is down at Starbucks, and they're trying to find a little bit more money. They um they had Mondelez back up until 2011 do all their packaged goods. They had that licensed off. So everything inside the Starbucks was Starbucks, but everything inside a grocery store was actually Mondelez doing it with the Starbucks brand on it. Oh, okay. Starbucks took that back under uh, their umbrella. They thought they could handle this. It's turned out that Starbucks is having a tough enough time getting people into the shop to actually buy the coffee, let alone buy coffee from Walmart branded with Starbucks. So they're selling this packaging licensing agreement back out into the open market. It sounds like it's going to Nestle. We're hearing about $3.7 billion okay. maybe. So Starbucks is having trouble enough running the the retail side of the business wow. decided that the, the the packaged goods should maybe go to a packaged goods company yeah, that sure. does that already and they all you know all the pipelines in order and all the logistics sure. and like i don't understand some of these companies try to take on so much more than they need to handle you're running thousands and thousands of coffee shops all over the world yeah you know, like focus but on the probably thing. one of the most expensive coffee shops. Make like, your little bit of money on on the other end by selling your brand off and allowing somebody who does what you're looking to have done with your product do professionally. Let them do it on the big scale. Nestle, obviously, big scale package. Yes. Goods, you know, yes. like they know everything about that business. You're never going to be able to do it better than them. No. It's no. better to They've sell the license and bring the bring the capital in and do something with the capital that That's can actually. Right re-spark some interest in that Starbucks brand that seems to be struggling so much. Wow, that was the end of headlines. I'm just, yeah. There wasn't much to talk about, so I figured I might as well talk about it, right? Yeah, there yeah. wasn't a whole lot. We hadn't been here in a couple of weeks, and I got 41 earnings here today. We do, we do. So I'm yeah, going to but... roll through earnings. I'm just going to give you the highlights, and I'm not okay. going to give you any opinion. I think earnings have been good. Um, the statistic off the top, 81% of the S&P 500 companies have reported so far. Uh, we're on pace to be the strongest quarter of earnings since Q3 of 2010. So there's been that many EPS and rev beats. Things are doing well. Yeah. We're having a couple of, there's a couple issues out there. Pharmaceutical companies still, I'm not, I don't, man, there's real disparity between some pharmaceutical companies and others. And you see it yeah. quarter over quarter in some companies' earnings where I'm just, it, it yeah. 
I wouldn't be in a pharmaceutical ETF right now. Let's just say that. If I was looking to be in something, I would be in something very, very specific in big pharma. Because I think big pharma has maybe the most glaring diversification between com a couple companies that are doing really, really well and a couple companies that are just kind of existing. They're right. giant companies that have big legacy brand products and stuff, but they're not making any kind of headway whatsoever in the actual industry. Right. They're in. So yeah, as, as the earnings go through, that was that's the thing that I think I noticed the most was that earnings still good, beating everything. I mean, EPS, where I thought it was gonna be with all the tax cuts, big pharma kind of disappointing still. Really? I'm, I'm just, I'm, yeah, I'm not moved by it. There's just not the growth. There just isn't the, there isn't the growth across the sector I don't know what it is. I just don't know what it is. Yeah. I, don't I, I see no certain idea. companies doing amazing things. And I see a lot of also rands and that's the sector that jumps out to me the most as the, you're, you have to blatantly pick best. Right. I'm not going to say who's yeah. obviously, but I mean, you can tell by some of these earnings. So whatever, 41 earnings this week. Let's do it. Because the S&P 500 has a lot of companies. We've got a few Canadian companies in here. We're moving through lows, ticker symbol L, 89 cents, beat by 11 cents, 3.58 billion. That's up 8.5%. Year over year, lows close the week, 84, 23. I heard lows might take their company private. Really? That's what the talk was during the week, right, right around earnings time on Monday there for lows. There was talk that lows might take the company private. It is what it is. Right. I don't know what to tell you. You're never gonna be mm. Home Depot. No, you're not. So no. I don't know what taking it private's gonna. You might need to restructure something. They just don't like the that's way things are operating. It seems yeah. like a company that's doing. It's a fairly well number two in a marketplace that doesn't have a solid number three. That's right. But maybe they think if they do some restructuring, they can come out all guns a blazing and maybe yeah. make a run at Home Depot. I'm not maybe. entirely sure. Or maybe it's just a streamlining of the business that they're trying yeah. to. Or maybe it's all smoke. Could be, yeah, it was exactly. all it's all just talk as of right now. Obviously, Lowe's didn't come out and say they're looking to do it. There was no. just the talk of it. Moving on, Allergan, based out of Ireland. It's those tax things, right? Uh, right. Ticker symbol AGN, EPS 374, beat the street by 39 cents. Revs of 3.67 billion, beat by 80 million, 2.8% revenue growth year over year. Their R&D expense this year was 1.57 billion in that quarter. Um, that's up 6.5%. SG&A expense, which is the uh, selling general and administrative expense, down 9.1% across the company. That's good. When you can bring down your expenses, your selling and administrative expenses down almost 10%, that's that's strong cost cutting, right? Oh, like sure. You got, a, that's a, you got a 39 cent EPS beat probably because you're finding all sorts of ways to save money. So that's, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. you know, it, there's nothing wrong with it. If you're in a good economy and things are doing well, it doesn't matter. You can still play it really tight to the oh, best. Yeah, you yeah. don't have to get really loose with it. Strong performance of medical aesthetics, neuroscience, and urology. U.S. Specialized Therapeutics Division was up 6.5% in revenue. U.S. General Medicine up 9.1% in revenue. And International up 17.2% in revenue. You make your decisions in the uh, pharmaceutical industry. Well, I'm just saying, there's a lot of choices out there. I think the glaring disparity, even at the top, even at guys who do revs of three, four, five billion plus a quarter, the disparity with what's going on in the actual company, I think stands out fairly, uh, yeah, it's, fair, it's fairly abrupt. You see it when yeah, you're looking oh, you for definitely it. Do, yeah. Just saying, Allergan, that's a, that's a decent earnings call there. Air Canada reported earnings 19 cents and revenues of $4.07 billion. That rev number up 11.8% year over year. Price of 24.05 at the end of the week. That's Canadian. Air Canada, the big question. Do you think they've hedged the fuel, expecting that fuel is going to run up as much as it has? And is fuel going to continue to run, and do you continue to hedge it, or do you predict that fuel is going to come back down? Because some there's somebody at Air Canada that has to make that decision. Right. Oh, for and sure. Yeah. Price and fuel fluctuating is definitely going to affect every airline out sure. right there. I'm pretty sure they have hedged their fuel into it. Uh, they've been around for quite some time. I'm pretty sure a big uh, big airline like this has these kind of numbers already crunched to figure out. Uh, you think? I don't you know. You think so, right? I don't know, man. I don't. I didn't really see what. I mean, okay. 
I'm not the analyst that probably are employed by Air Canada, let's face it, right? right so, like, right. I, I will remove myself from that group and give them their due, because there's probably more of them than there are of me, but I'm yeah. probably bigger than them. <laughs> so, we'll call it even Steven, right? But I don't know if the industry necessarily seen oil finding its way over 65, and now sure, it sits yeah. pretty staunchly at 69. I'm not entirely sure, but when I see an airline, I just say, you know, we're watching the price of the, pr the price of fuel move. Right. Yeah. That's the only thing you need to keep in mind. Even if you see a really good quarter, right. This is one of those things where you have to take into consideration everything that's going on, mm -hmm. because there's outside factors that can directly impact the company. So when oh, you sure. look at it, right. the company might be working seamlessly, doing fantastic work, everything per seat mile revenue up and everything doing fantastic but you know fuel is a, a very very egregiously uh yeah you ain't going nowhere for fuel right yeah you need fuel to fly that's that's, a, that's an evil mistress to be tethered to it is yeah because you can't really control it and you're trying to predict it for your own future so air canada you do with it what you will right is Canada coming back on its own? It might be. Is Air Canada a good investment? Take a look at it. But when you're considering airlines, period, yeah. fuel moving around is definitely something you got to look at. For sure. Fuel That's the moving. biggest problem yeah. you got to look at. Well, I mean, you've got to look at where they are plane life cycle wise and everything. I mean, there's oh, a million sure things, go right? But as of right now, when we've really seen in the last three weeks oil move off what I thought was a pretty good, pretty good level. Right. Now I start thinking like, man, maybe you might maybe just want to start making any consideration with companies that have to do with oil, where right. if their products need petroleum to be built or anything, all of a sudden costs are going to go up. It's just, right. it's going to happen, right? For so sure it is. you need to take all that into consideration, not just what's on that company's books because they're, they're integrated with so many other industries, airlines, oil. Same thing, basically. Basically. Right? Right. Almost, you need yeah. it to fly the plane because I don't, I don't think you get many places when it falls. No, no. You get no. You can't even get in the air with no gas, no, no. fuel. Yeah, you don't want to just kind of get up there no. and then come down. No, no, you that's really not, need to get up the PI. Yeah, well, maybe if you could glide down. Maybe you could. Yeah. yeah. That doesn't sound plausible though. No, it doesn't. Pretty no. heavy. It is. Those things are heavy. They're big. They're, yeah, they're too yeah, big. They maybe are. we should grow wings. Right? If evolution would just kick in. No doubt, right? yeah. If Ray Kurzweil was right and we could get this nanotechnology bubbling. What's oh. he doing over at Google? Yeah, where's yeah. our robot wings? Yeah, give me some robot wings and then nobody has to worry about fuel anymore. Yeah, quit prices slacking. Come on, everybody's yeah. flying right now. Yeah, I'm yeah. upset about this. Me too. This. Yeah. We're flustered. Yeah. McDonald's, which is probably what I'm going to have to eat after this podcast. Nice. $1.79 a share beat the street by 12 cents. 5.14 billion in revs beat by 170 million down 9.5 percent in revenues year over year but mcdonald's doing some tinkering recently with their business trying to figure a few things out changing that menu around trying right, right. going back to an older style of mcdonald's burgers and fries so i still think mcdonald's has a lot of stuff going on in the right direction global comparable store sales up 5.5 percent estimate was for growth of 3.8 that's a big beat u.s comp store sales up 2.9%, that beat the estimate at 2.7%. McDonald's, when you're growing comp store sales, well, and you're yeah. McDonald's, you're driving more, you, we were at McDonald's earlier. Yeah, I got McDonald's. Yeah. How busy was it? Packed. It was packed, right? right? 15 minutes came order. Yeah. McDonald's. Or just patties. They make, patties. Good, they make good food. They do. For what it is, McDonald's is clearly the industry leader in that, uh, that fast oh, food. Oh, for sure, yeah. yes. Mc yeah, it's not. Think back to Charlie, is like McDonald's. McDonald's. They're everywhere. Yeah, they're Their everywhere. brand it's is big art. so iconic. For sure. So they needed to streamline that business. I thought they were getting a little too they were getting a little too touchy feely. They were trying to make everybody happy. Nah, yeah. You're a burger and fries company. For if sure, people yeah. want a healthy alternative, go home and buy a They'll salad. Go and get a wrap. Somewhere. Yeah, go yeah. make a salad. Grow people come to McDonald's to get McDonald's. Yeah. Right? Stay with what brought you to the dance. Exactly. Honestly. Yeah. So McDonald's, now that they've started to get their business act back in order seems to be growing comparable store sales again as people start to revisit the fact that mcdonald's is bloody delicious that's right ak steel that's ticker symbol aks eps a nine cents beat by six was only going to be three cents man wow. if they beat that it tripled the the actual estimates revenues a 1.66 billion beat by 90 million up 8.5 percent year over year 
they said the price per flat rolled ton of steel was up on the global markets year over year by 4%, but that shipments were down 2%. So there you go. There's a good example of the cheaper steel on the market and the fact that people are dumping mm -hmm. that steel in economies where other companies are following all the WTO regulations, right, right. all the labor laws. Yeah. There's not being any of this, uh, you know, like gray area, right. everything's being on the up and up. So AK Steel reports, hey man, prices are up, but we can't sell anymore. Right. We're selling less, our volumes are down because there's people out there beating us to market cheaper. Cheap, before Be these tariffs come in, huh? Well, well just like in total, I think that's just been happening for such a long period of time, it's the reason why these tariffs are happening, right? right? Like it's just not a fair marketplace for, you know, Amer mainly American steel companies. That's right, yeah. That yeah. are having to play by all the rules and get hit with all the taxes and no. Pay people, really pay people good, strong, professional labor wages. And, and when you don't have to do that in other countries, you can pay people pennies on the dollar and there's no safety. Oh, that's right. right. It's not the same. It becomes where it's an unfair uh, marketplace and that needs to get corrected. So when I see that, I didn't care about AK Steel's quarter so much. I actually really cared more about the, the bullet point that the price per per flat rolled ton was up 4%, but the volume shipments were down oh, 2%. Yeah. I think that screams that there's a little bit of a, an issue there. Yeah, yeah. More than a little bit yeah, of an the, issue. I think the the prices are up. It means demand must have went up. It has to be, yeah. But the demand clearly is being fulfilled in elsewhere. The, elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah. BP, British Petroleum, obviously, we're talking the heavyweights of heavyweights oh, when it yeah. comes to oil. 78 cents, beat by 10 cents, 68.17 billion dollars in revenue in a quarter, 68 point Wow. Yeah, that's BP, right? Like, uh, 220 million beat, up 22% in revs year over year, as obviously, oil going up is helping them. That's basically what they said. Oh, yeah. It's the biggest profit since Q3 2014, 558, uh, 10 uh, Great British Pounds, because it's not obviously an American right now, no, so right, 558 yeah. uh, British pounds is the price. It, they love it. Price oils up. Of course. Yeah. They're an oil company. They, they've got all the infrastructure. They don't, need, they don't need to do it. it. They don't need to do anything, right? No, they're like no. Exxon. They're just the, enjoying it. They're going to reap the whirlwind. They're kicking the feet up right now. Their feet are definitely kicked up. Oh, for as, sure. As I don't think anybody thought oil was going to go to this number. So no. everybody who's going to get the benefit off this, and these companies, the very... The best. Oh, of course. Even though we've seen that their actual price per barrel is is gone up a little bit when you compare like their price per barrel before what they were pulling it out and actually getting it refined for. It's gone up well, like four it's, bucks. Yeah, it's gone up. It's gone up considerably, a few dollars, yeah. right? And it, so it was sitting at sixty five for like sixty four, sixty five for a bit. Yeah, no, but I mean up. the price per barrel to have it actually pulled up and oh, refined. Sorry, sorry. BP's price has gone up three right. or four dollars as well, right? So as we see the price of oil increase three or four dollars in the last, well, that's been like the last month, the price for BP to actually do it is going up, which means the cost of skilled labor is probably going up, that's right? right yeah. Because there starts to be more of a demand for skilled labor as industry kicks up into... Oh, for sure, right? I mean, how many higher gears can industry kick up into? But oil obviously is needs a little kick. You do. It's Oil nice. worldwide could use a little kick, but as it kicks up, the cost per barrel goes up for BP. But other than that, I didn't see anything holding this quarterback. Huge profits. Biggest Huge. since Q3 of 2014. Aetna, soon to be a part of CVS. That's right. That's uh, when that... That's right. Regulators. Yeah. You know what I mean? Regulators. They like to get their hands in everything. We'll see. It's yeah. a, that should be a pretty seamless... Uh, Acquisition Aetna ticker symbol A E T E P S three dollars and nineteen cents beat the street by twenty two cents fifteen point three four billion dollars in those sweet sweet premium revenues yeah. beat by fifty million up one point two percent year over year as it's not growing exponentially there's a lot of these companies with health insurance they've got a yeah. lot of people under contract there's not a great uh, you know, like exodus of people from one company to another. In any for sure. Year. And there's not a great uh, entry point for like multiple people into into the marketplace every year. A lot of people have sure, it. Sure, yeah. yeah, you. it's more, it's very predictable. So when you see Humana, Aetna, you see all these companies that do the same kind of stuff. Premiums down 5%, fees up 39.8%, net investment income down 24.2%. Don't uh, pay attention to that. Very small segment of their actual business, the fees up. 
percent, and we'll see how the integration between them and CVS goes, right? And how a lot of the people that are going to have um, the Aetna premiums, how that's going to end up affecting their cost when they go to CVS, and what CVS ends up cutting them as a deal, because Aetna and CVS will obviously be the same same company. That's right. Right. Yeah. So you'll have your insurance and the actual company selling you the pharmaceuticals being the same guys. So you can imagine there's going to be a nice working agreement there that's sure. going to give people a lot of incentive. Right. to take their Aetna policy and shop at CVS's right. retail locations. There's a lot of uh, companies right now that are merging together. It yeah, well, there's like... talk. there was talk at the end of the week, well, I said Humana, there's talk at the end of the week with Walmart and Humana potentially getting together because uh, Walmart, or, uh, Amazon is talking about buying, uh, it's called Flipkart. It's like the, the biggest online retailer in India, which again, billion people. Sure, and yeah. I think Walmart was thinking about buying Flipkart too, or making an offer for it, or pursuing sure. it, or something, right? At least looking into it. Now Amazon's looking into it. Obviously, it would be pretty seamless for both of those companies. Yeah, it would sure, be yeah. one of those type of purchases that obviously make a lot of sense. It would get you into a marketplace, and they probably don't near have the market share, and they'd like for either. Sure, of them. Yeah, yeah. But then there was a lot of talk on Friday out of, out of a couple of analysts about Humana being a much better potential for Walmart, and Walmart getting into something completely different and kind of diversifying right out of what they already do because Humana has um, a subscriber base or whatever you want to call it. They're not subscribers, but, you know, like the per premium payers. The guys, right. they, they have the whatever, whatever the Medicare is called. Right, yeah, yeah. It's not a subscription. I don't, I get my Medicare through my work. What the, yeah, what's I, a, a policy? The policy, policy payers, go, right? The policy payers are skewed a little bit to the higher age range at Humana rather than at some of the other uh, insurance companies or medical insurance okay. companies out there. And Walmart has shown statistics of a gradually increasing age range of people that are their base uh, shoppers. So it would be kind of a natural convergence of the two. Right. As you would bring in a company that kind of caters to people that are a little bit of... Little, Older, let's. It's old. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah. they're in the older brackets of senior. Yeah, you know. And yeah. Walmart has shown again the same thing. Statistics show that Walmart is starting to cater more and more to people of, you know, an older age demographic. So it makes almost cohesive sense for the two to get together. Right. You will offer the pharmacy and all the pharmaceuticals, and on top of that, all the insurance and everything under one roof for an audience that both parties probably already have and yeah, now the true, synergies yeah. of bringing them together make it a lot uh, easier for the for the client so it seems like a good idea so talk out there with i mean you say there are a lot of people getting together when you've got all this money sitting on the books when you're these companies and you're in these like th these are these uh teetering point times where you have to make a deal and diversify sure. because individual industry like I'm not saying over uh, over expand like GE and become right. and become so so over expanded that people can't even really tell what kind of business you're in. But you definitely need to find a niche bigger than the one thing that you do. That's very true. There's yeah. too much money out there. People are making too many moves. They're, everybody's aggressive. It's a dog eat dog world. Oh, it and is. And money's yeah. available. So these acquisitions and these mergers are going to take place as everybody starts to leverage their position and say, how can I get stronger and what direction should we move in compared to where our competitors are moving? So you see the rumor of Amazon potentially moving into more retail with the pickup of India's biggest online retailer. And then within hours, you hear conversation of Walmart completely moving out of that direction and potentially thinking about moving into health insurance. Right, because everybody's mm. trying to find where their edge is. That's right. Right. Yeah. So the edges are out there. Aetna and CVS to be together soon. We would imagine if regulators. Oh, and I, I would imagine that one seems like a, a deal that I would imagine gets locked down. Pfizer, P F E is your ticker symbol. Seventy seven cents beat by two cents. Twelve point nine one billion dollars missed by two hundred and forty million on the analyst estimate, and that rev number is only up one percent year over year. Some of their segments: innovative health up five point six percent, essential health down five point four percent, legacy products up one percent, 
internal medicine though down one percent when you look inside that segment as a whole oncology inside internal medicine is up 26 percent and we see oncology continue to gain significant ground inside pfizer's book of business they're really really focusing in on that and doing a pretty good job of it as pfizer has not had the type of growth that a lot of people have wanted to see out of a company that was really really innovative in the industry sure. for a very long time and had a lot of drugs that got a lot of mainstream publicity Pfizer is not that type of company anymore. So they're no, looking to no. find a niche. Oncology continues to grow for Pfizer. You look at internal medicine as a whole, down 1%. But oncology, under that uh, under that banner, up 26% in and of itself. CEO Ian Reid came out and said, investing in co the company's pipeline is more important than a transformative deal out in the marketplace. He feels that everything is either valued to the maximum it should be, and right. you'd have to pay a premium for it, where things are already overvalued, he feels focusing internally on what Pfizer can do is a lot better allocation of funds than to be going out there and spending money and energy trying to bring in, actually first off, trying to acquire and go through the regulatory process, which right. I would imagine would make you go gray and gray. Oh, headache, oh yeah. And then the five or 10 years after that's done, oh, and, yeah, yeah, and sure. none of it matters anyways, then you have to actually bring in this company fairly easily into your company and that oh, yeah. transition probably isn't the most seamless because you're no, all of a sudden I doubt it, yeah. two companies that are you know on pretty high scale doing the same job but i would imagine very differently yeah yeah who so, knows gonna butt heads right yeah like, it's, knows? it seems like one of those things where i agree with pfizer that uh pharmaceuticals and biospec companies i can see picking up i can see when you pick up niche companies that are working on you know, like technology in one individual industry. They're very small. Right, okay, they're just working on like one But thing, Pfizer right? to go out and try to make a move on Bristol-Myers Squibb or somebody like that doesn't make as much sense no, as to it reinvest into your research and development and go back to what made you Pfizer to begin with, which was coming out with innovative drugs That's that you true. discovered yeah. or you uh, you bought little tiny companies that had drugs that you knew were going to work through the FDA yes, and you yeah. took a risk and ended up buying them for pennies on a dollar. Tapestry, that's Coach. Remember they changed that the name is, to yeah. Tapestry. They also got Kate Spade. TPR is a ticker symbol. EPS of 54 cents, beat by four. Revs of 1.32 billion, beat by 20 million, up 32.6% year over year. They closed the week 46.16. Kate Spade sales, though, down 9%. Were predicted to only be down about 6%, down 9%. And on top of that, they got disappointing forward guidance at a Tapestry. So while the quarter looks good, that rev number, 32.6% year over year looks nice. I mean, granted, we talk about the integration of Kate Spade into the company. Right. But then you talk about forward guidance and coach, man. Coach just can't seem to figure it out. They got overtaken, it seemed like, as far as cachet by Michael Kors. Oh, they, yeah, I think they so, They scrambled. Yeah. They tried to change their name and stuff. Like, they I got don't shook. Know. I think they got shook a little bit, I to be honest. I think they did, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't see coaches having the type of prestige that they once had. Yeah, well, they were in the running for the longest time, and they saw this one it's, come up from behind, and they got really shook. It really seemed like it coach them. was, it seemed like, uh, that, that was a brand. I mean, my I've spent more than enough money on coach purses. Yeah. Not no, recently. I need it. I not have, recently. I have never, but I know that brand. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I know that brand. Absolutely. Yeah. And it just doesn't seem like Tapestry is is making the type of ground that they should be in that sector where I mean like there's only a couple people in that it's like the middle price range right. 200 to 600 dollars it's not premium bags it's not right. Louis Vuitton yeah. you're only gonna have a couple companies but how many times can you make a bag though right? huh? and sell that same bag coaches uh, coaches uh, they, they're nice bags well, I guess how many times can they make a pair of shoes and sell them right that's yeah. true Michael yeah. Kors seems to be doing alright Maybe these things are doing, doing pretty good. Yeah, the high-end, really high-end premium bags do really well. They've got great yeah. margins, and they're beautiful. They last a long time. There's yeah. serious demand. Coach just seems to have lost. It's that cachet in the market. Mm, Once yes. you kind of lose that a little bit, it's tough to get it back. You stop being Even looked if you at. Ever do. You stop look, being looked at as premium. And when yeah. people stop looking, you, looking at you like that, they stop being willing to put out a significant yeah, dollar for value sure. for you when they have other options. And there's a lot of bag options out there. Merck, 
another drug company we are covering uh, there's a lot of drug companies this week mrk ticker symbol eps one dollar and five cents beat by five cents 10.04 billion in revs that's off by 60 million but up 6.5 percent in revs year over year the pharma segment up nine percent animal health up 13.4 percent other revenues down 82.9 percent the big uh, glaring glaring number in the whole thing net income down 52.5 percent oh. so making a lot of revs but uh spending a lot of money not making yeah. a lot of income Merck has been I, they like they liked the, the uh, quarter when it first came out. It moved on when it first came out. I'm not, I'll tell, I'm not a fan of Merck. I'm, no. Yeah, I'll just put that right out there right now. Pfizer could come back. Allergan, what we talked about earlier, is phenomenal at this point. Merck is, yeah, Merck. a shell of what it was, right. to, to be honest with you. Like, you just don't see the growth out of Merck that I thought you were going to, continuing on. It's, a, it's very much a such a known, strong company that was just, it, it had such a foundation of, of forward medicine they were just so yeah and they just don't they're not there anymore they're no. just so much an afterthought just in lost their mojo yeah I, almost, I cover them and i almost wonder why because we don't really have much to talk about out of, out of Merck unless i want to tell you about the declining sales and all their major brands that's right yeah. that would be what i'd be telling you about that would be that's the big key points other than me telling you just segment uh, percentages so which is kind of you know for the Merck shareholders out there there's Sorry. a lot of better yeah. Under Armour, another company where, man, talk about not best of breed. UAA ticker symbol EPS of zero, oh. but that beat by five cents because they were supposed to lose five cents, so they broke even. Good on you guys. Good job. Good job. Right? Yeah. So revenues of 1.19 billion, beat by 70 million. That revenue number is up 6.3 percent year over year. Close the week, 17 dollars 36 cents. Wholesale revenues up a percent. Direct to consumer revenues up 17%. So opening up some of those digital yeah, channels, yeah. getting stuff. I was going to say that's online. Yeah, and right? not having to worry about the actual retail location. Uh, North American revenues flat, international revenues up 27%. So not growing in the marketplace. You would think they would be growing in, which you I thought Under Armour originally was kind of it was kind of geared towards America, right? It's it's meant to be like under your football gear, and then, right, but right, apparently right. their apparel and stuff is taking a lot more hold than a lot of their actual sport apparel. What they're known for, yeah, really. the actual clothes with like the impression. brand, the brand logo right. seems to be a lot more useful and utilitarian to people than the actual utilitarian pieces of apparel. So that. apparel up seven percent. Footwear up 1%, which is, I mean, they're not making a lot of headway. Nike, Adidas, there's been a lot of shuffling of the deck in the yeah. industry and footwear from Under Armour. It's been out for a while, man. They just, they came into the market and made like no dent at all. years or so. No dent at all. Well, no, not that long. Really? Had, Under no, Armour? No, really? not that long. Good, good, good try, though. When you make a bland brand, brand, it seems like you've been out for 100 years. Yeah, Accessories I so, up yeah. 3% Under Armour. Yeah. As for as bad as Nike's doing right now, I wouldn't advise Under Armour over Nike. No, yeah, definitely. Scott's Miracle Grow SMG. I'm a big fan of Scott's Miracle Grow. This is a rough quarter, two dollars and eighty-eight cents. Missed analyst estimates by forty-three cents. Revenues of one point zero one billion. Missed by seventy million. That revenue number is down seven point three percent year over year. Their price eighty-one forty-seven. Still, there's been downgrades. Analysts got a little. Uh, touchy they Today. just it, there's a late start to the growing season there's been a the whole western hemisphere has had a very long winter so scots didn't do near the sales in that quarter that they do right. especially near the end of the quarter people got to remember how entrenched they are in an industry that's just taking off they're one of they're they're not it's not even one of they are the player in the fertilizer aspect of the medical marijuana oh, hands industry down. or the d legalization of marijuana sure. industry so and scott's continues to make acquisitions for companies that it's going to make that even more accessible for everybody to be getting brands that are made under scott's miracle grow we're about to go legal here we're going to go legal here what july august a couple months away yeah so while scott's doesn't have the greatest quarter because we've got a little little bit of a late start to the growing season you have to remember that scott's early on hedged their bets into an industry that while i think is overpriced individually on a lot of companies right now scott's is going to have the 
they're going to have the pick of the litter because everyone's going to come to them for the best of breed fertilizer. Oh, for sure. There's nobody that does it better. So for the most part, they're going to get all the business, whether Canopy is is well overinflated in price or not. Right. When you're looking to grow the best product to try to compete out of market, that's right. your best product is going to come a lot of the time from Scott's miracle Grow, and they're going to be in that industry because they've long committed. And you look at the ETF here in Canada, it's all a bunch of grow op companies and Scott's miracle Grow because they definitely balance it out. They're not the ones that people are overvaluing, but those are the ones, that's the company, like I've said before, that I think has the long-term value because they're going to deal with everyone. Right, yeah, I think They're so, going to yeah. deal with everyone. Right? Yeah, they got their finger in all the pies, and they don't have to build an industry. They already make fertilizer. Exactly. All their stuff's already set up. Yeah, they're already making they fertilizer. Make dirt, they'll be around forever. They're, and they do it the best. They yeah. do the best dirt. The best dirt. The best dirt. Cummins. They make the best engines, or some of the best engines out there. CMI is a ticker symbol. Three thirty EPS. Beat by thirty eight cents. Revs five point six billion. Beat by four hundred and twenty million dollars. That revenue number up 22% year over year. They closed the week at 148.55. It's a 52 week low for Cummins. The engine division up 21% this quarter. Distribution up 13. Components up 30. Power systems up 22. $341 million returned to shareholders through buybacks. But uh, they're paying for extensive field repairs to engines from the years of 2010 to 2015 that no longer are compliant with new emission laws all over the oh, United States. Okay. So there's emission laws in different states that are different. They've actually done a bunch in California already where they went back and tested them against it's still not good enough. So Cummins is retroactively doing a lot of emissions regulation work yeah. out in the field that's costing them a significant amount of money oh, right for now. Sure. And that's causing shareholders to be trepidatious even though the company in and of itself mm -hmm. is running a tight ship and we know that cummins is a fantastic company i mean you can see every segment up, sure, right. double digits almost every quarter but this could be a little bit of an issue because well you're burning so much money yeah, right? and you don't know what it takes to appease everyone when it's going to stop and you don't know what it takes to appease everybody. That's right. Yeah. Every, every state is different. They've all got different regulations and different yeah. regulators. That's and right. And people can be a lot more sticky about environmental issues. Those sticklers. Yeah, they pick yeah. a hill to die on, right? Exactly. The, the environment is one people happily do. Gilead Sciences, G-I-L-D, EPS of $1.48, missed by 19 cents. Revenues of $5.1 billion, missed by $300 million. That number is down 21.5% year over year. Net sales as well. Well, down 21.8%. Gilead 65.82 to close the week. Take your take your pick of pharmaceutical companies, my friend. Mondelez, we mentioned them earlier. We did when we were talking about Starbucks, right? Yes. Starbucks selling their packaged uh, goods license over to Nestle, but Mondelez used to have it. Mondelez doesn't, but they decided anyways they were going to report a quarter this week. So regardless oh, okay. of having that deal with Starbucks. MDLZ, ticker symbol EPS, 62 cents. Beat the street by a penny. Not bad. Not bad. You could use a penny for something. For sure. Yeah. Revenue is $6.77 billion. Beat by $100 million, up 5.6% year over year. Price of $38.90. Emerging markets is the standout for Mondelez as the emerging market sales were up 5.5% in the quarter. Mondelez all over the world. So anytime you can try to build up those percentages of market share, because you just, so many brands, I mean, the United States, everything, Mon, it's, it's like trying to be Kraft or Clorox or, right. or Kellogg or any of those other companies. Like you're just so saturated that your only major, major growth is going to be when you finally get into another market and have oh, something sure, take hold yeah. and you get a little more shelves. Mondelez moving into the emerging markets, obviously, still have been for years 5.5% up this quarter. T Mobile in the process of getting together with Sprint. Regulators will have something to say about that. TMUS, the ticker symbol, 78 cents EPS, beat by 3 cents. Revenues 10.46 billion, beat by 110 million. That revenue number up 8.8% year over year. 57.26 is the price at the end of the week. Net ads up 1.43 million. 
versus 1.14 million last year in the same quarter. Postpaid churn was up a little bit though. 1.07% versus 1.18% last year. No, that's down. Last year's was up. That was down. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Right, yeah. Getting into a lull. We're like 18 earnings in here, and I'm just halfway reading through this. That's not the way that works, my yeah, friend. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, yeah postpaid churn is down over at T-Mobile as T-Mobile thrives through this quarter, looking to push into a merger with Sprint. The uh, hell with the regulators. Hell with the regulators. That's what they think. Apple. I mean, and this was this and Tesla were obviously the earnings of the week. Oh, of course, yeah. Apple killed it. We've won, run well over two hours. We yeah, have. This is our longest so far. There's been just so many earnings, and I don't know, just something to chat about. Yeah. What the hell? What the what hell else are you doing? Yeah. It's Sunday. I don't know. Uh, Apple AAPL ticker symbol EPS two dollars seventy three cents. Beat the street by five. Revenue is sixty one point one billion dollars. Beat by one hundred and sixty million and up fifteen point five percent year over year. That Apple can't do no wrong. No. Nope. It's tough to be the best. Yeah. I don't yeah. Know. I wonder if it bangs against their knee when they walk. I, well, I bet you it does. I bet you <laughs> Price, 183.83. The dividend got bumped up as well. 73 cents a share. That's up 15.9%. Yeah. $100 billion share repurchase program. Only $100 billion. Only $100 billion. Only 100 billion. Yeah, that's nothing. nothing. No. I haven't even really heard of that ever before. That's, that's, that's pretty cheap. That's Yeah, that's yeah, pretty that's astonishing. Dirty. They're just stealing it. $100 billion is astonishing. $100 billion. Wow. That company is, can you imagine that company almost went out of business? Yeah, I did. This is a company that almost went out of business. Yeah, that should not exist almost right now. It's unbelievable some things. Just, just a turnaround. Yeah, the That's way amazing. things work, man. It's From the just, very bottom to the very top. You would ne If you went back to the 90s and asked somebody, they could see Apple being the biggest company in the world. No. There's just no way, like, with what five products 10 yeah. products it's such a streamlined business computers i remember back in the 90s was like ibm I they don't make any IBM. mistakes every time they release something a new generation of any iteration of any product oh, they better. make no mistakes this processor thing has me shook it really does yeah. we've talked about this 10 times we have, i've yeah. talked to other people about this like other people that don't know about the stock market, right. I've just broached this conversation with them and been like, what do you think about this? Like, don't you think this is silly? Yeah, it is. Like, it Intel's really been is. doing this forever. I don't care what small startup you bought that makes processors yeah. in the garage. Exactly. It's yeah. not Intel. So that not. Apple, great quarter. Device shipments, 52 million. Uh, the iPad sold 9.1 million. Mac, uh, 4.1 million. China revenue increased 21%. They were concerned with that being flat, if not really? down, because the premium phones, they think, you know, China has a lot of options to get really good phones mm, with yes. a lot of good intellectual property yeah, yeah, yeah. without having to pay the premium price. True, yeah. Real iPhones, right? Not those fake Apple stores. This is real iPhones. Real. So, yeah, but up 21%, which was in services. This is, a, this is the big coup that nobody realizes this is the, the segment of Apple that's driving a lot of this growth that's going to drive growth going into the future as everybody that's got a phone's got a phone and they're going to oh, re-up a sure, phone yeah. when it's phone time. But services up 31%, 9.19 billion when the estimate was only for 8.4. So growing at an exponential nice. rate, services at Apple, subscription fees and all sorts of goodies that you're going to pay for to stay being a loyal Apple <laughs> yes, customer you are. is what's driving Apple's share price and what's returning $100 billion in share repurchases. That's right. Added to the dividend. It's it's all looking good. It's 2020 the processor. 2020 yes. the processor. Yes. Not even LG delays. LG delays on the OLED screen. If they got to stick with Samsung for another six months to make sure LG gets it 100% right, yeah, do it. then I don't think that, but I think the processors, if you spoil a generation worth of stuff, yeah, you yeah. could tarnish your name by, and people will look at you and go like, you were a design company. Yeah. You were not a tech company. Yeah. Like just because you make a phone, mm. just because you make an operating system, yeah, yeah. you weren't making components. Yeah, that's very something totally different. Very different. Very you different. made phones look nice. Yeah. You didn't make phones work. Yeah. Big this difference. It's like source review. Clorox CLX EPS of a dollar thirty seven beat the street by six cents. Revenues of one point five two billion beat by ten million. That revenue number is up two point seven percent year over year. Revenue numbers up, up. Everybody, revenue number up. Who was down? G Gilead. 
Everybody yeah, up, Gilead's up, done, yeah. right? Everybody else up, up, up. Revenues up year over year. It's yeah, yeah. People are doing business. Yeah, yeah. Done. That's what you like to see, right? Price at the close of the week, a hundred and twenty dollars and twenty nine cents. Sales up three percent across the brand. Cleaning up three percent. Household up one percent. Lifestyle up two percent. And international up four percent is what makes up that three percent increase in sales. Clorox. Another one, pretty saturated. You make increases in sales that drastically, yeah. you know, like I'm saying, you got to take market share from somebody. When you're a brand that covers that much square footage already, there's not a lot of room to move. Yeah, Clorox is already king when it comes to what they do, right? Yeah, so that's what I mean. When you start moving, it means you're taking market share, that's right? right, yeah. Market share is what you need when you look at companies like that because you want to take they're that. not innovating. There's nothing that they're going to do that's going to move no. that stock price $50 to the no. upside. They make my socks really white. They, what they got to do is they right. got to make the socks whiter than everybody exactly, else. Exactly, yes. Humana, the company we were talking about earlier that potentially Walmart might be looking at, That's that was right. all rumors. This is all facts. HUM is the ticker symbol. 336 was the EPS. Beat by 17 cents. Revenues of 14.28 billion. Beat by 90 million. That's Ooh. up 3.8% year over year. The price at the end of the week, $287.39 a share. Premiums. Up 3.1%. Services up 29.2%. Investment income up 27%. I wonder what they're invested in. Yeah, no doubt. I wonder if oh, you, oh, I don't know. I wonder if Humana's invested in Bitcoin. Oh, for sure. Think so? I think so. Think yeah. they're using the, the Goldman desk there that's uh, doing the Bitcoin experiment? <laughs> Probably. Yeah, of they're doing they pretty are. good. I think their investment income would be up higher if they were in Bitcoin. 27%? But you'd probably be up actually a little higher than that. Probably, yeah. Yeah, maybe that's just for 2018. Maybe, that, yeah. That's the yeah. run from 65 to exactly, now. Yeah. yeah. Good job, Humana. <laughs> CVS Health. CVS is the ticker symbol EPS of $1.48. Beat the street by $0.07. Cents. Revenues of $45.69 billion. Missed by $90 million. Revs up 2.7% year over year. 63.10 is the price at the end of the week. Services revenues up 3.2%. Retail and LTC revenues up 5.6%. You put this company with Aetna and you are going to have one... Uh, Healthy healthcare company. You are. They are going to be covering a lot of ground. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, they are. I would imagine that one's going to work too. I don't see regulators putting a stop to that. Yum Brands, ticker symbol YUM, 90 cents EPS, beat by 22 cents, rev of a hunt or $1.37 billion, beat by 280 million. The rev number, though, down 3.5% year over year. 82.83 is the price at the end of the week. You know what they're having trouble with? What's that? Selling pizza in China. Really? Yeah. Apparently the Chinese not as into Pizza Hut as you might think. I'm in Pizza Hut. Yeah, you like Pizza Hut, I don't do. you? There's yeah. no Pizza Hut around here, is there? No, actually, no, you know there what? There's one. one over by the Starbucks that over right. there. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah, but pizza in China is not selling like Yum Brands wants it to. That's, that's a shame. Not taking off. We love Chinese food over here. We do. We yeah. don't like the pizza. I don't know why. It is what it is. Pizza yeah. Hut, though, right? Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Zoetis. Do you know what Zoetis is? Uh, Zoetis? They're another pharmaceutical they company. Are. One of my favorite pharmaceutical companies. You know why? Do you know what they specialize in? What is that? They specialize. They, they were spun off. Now, this wasn't... They weren't always their own company. They used to be one of the other large farmers. I'll let the viewers go out and do a little research to figure this out. But I'll tell you, okay. this is a market that continues to grow, that people continue to allocate money in their everyday life to this segment of their life they never did before. In the last 20 years, I assure you, the amount of money that's allocated from your personal expenses to this, especially if it needs it, in this day and age has become much more pro pro prolific. So Zoetis, animal health. People mm. spend so much money taking care of their yes. cats and dogs now. Yes. Extra, those dogs and cats are a part of the family. They used to just get taken to a farm up north. Yes. I.e. the back of the garage. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But nowadays, people spend so much money to keep their oh, animals healthy. Then you take into consideration they're already the, the front, the, the number one company in this sector. Then you think about all the farm animals that they oh, serve yeah, agriculturally. Right. 
it's a growing industry because people continue to eat, animals continue to get sick, That's right. and people continue on a personal level to allocate more and more money to taking care of their own animals because you know animals have become a part of people's family. Sure. How much money do you spend in, oh, in a year on your cats? Oh, thousands, thousands. Just on food alone, that's not a shot. I don't want to know what I spend on my two cats and my dog. Yeah. Now that you've said that, I don't actually buy it. My wife does. Right. But now that you said thousands, I'm a little upset. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't cheap. No. The farm is where they're going to go. <laughs> go to the farm, yeah. The farm right. up north. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. But Zoetis, I mean... They are in an industry, if, I mean, there's other players, but they are on a, a level in and of themselves. Livestock revenues up 9.5%, companion animal, animal revenues up 14.1%, contract manufacturing down 45.5%, mm. small segment. Zoetis, I mean, it's, it's, it's such a niche. You don't think of it. You think pharmaceuticals, you think of a bunch of other things. You think from generic drugs to research and development companies like AbbVie to, you know, like already established drugs like Abbott Labs. You think about humans first, right? You don't yes. think about the animals. You like, oh my God, that's more, big. There's more of them. They need yeah. to stay healthier because there's more and more regulation on food. Mm. So there, there's more and more overseers making sure that every animal has got every shot and everything yes. is up to code. And I would imagine you suffer some serious ramifications if you're farm gets some sort of tainted god oh, forbid yeah, yeah. right like you probably become an, an absolute albatross where you yeah, can't yeah. even enter the the no they just wipe the agricultural out economy yeah. yeah they just wipe you out i would yeah, imagine, I would at imagine that point, so, right so staying healthy and then you take into consideration that the more we become accustomed to animals being treated like they're a part of the family the more money people over time are going to allocate to not only Fluffy having a really sweet gold choker <laughs> right, that says right. Fluffy on it, yeah. but to make sure that if Fluffy has a bad hip, Fluffy mm. might have to go and do you know fifteen hundred dollars surgery, or Fluffy yes. might need medication. Yeah. Zoetis definitely. Well, I mean, I've been on this for years. I don't. I've told. It just seems like one of those things that fall by the wayside a little bit because it's almost so forgettable. Right. When you're in pharmaceuticals, you don't have to be directly invested in humans being healthy no you don't know there is a complete other way to play that and yeah. personally when you look at the growth in the sector and in the segments in that sector i'm not necessarily sure that it isn't a better play just overall just For saying sure. just saying sure. you got to look at it oh you yeah. got to do your own yeah you know, i'm not here to do your you do your own stuff. exactly you, make your you own worry job. about your own stuff talk yes. to your advisor do sure, your own homework yes. but i'm just saying if you haven't been hip to it yet there's a little hipping. You're welcome. There's, there you You're go. Welcome. MasterCard, ticker symbol MA, $1.50 revs, beat by 26 cents, $3.58 billion in revenue, or EPS, $1.50, 26 cents. Revenues, $3.58 billion, beat by $330 million. Revenues up 31.1% year over year. Price at the end of the week, $188.17. Nothing really to report out of the quarter. Again, with these companies... They're going to be one of the first uh, big beacons of issues. What we want to look mm. for is default rates going up. Right, yeah. Right? So we want to make sure that we're looking for people who aren't paying their bills, you know, and companies like credit cards that are able to they give out credit at a much higher interest rate and at a much more broad sense everybody gets credit right they become a pretty good barometer for when people start defaulting yeah you oh, start seeing sure. those numbers start to creep up from visa mastercard there was nothing from this that jumped no. out as we're seeing a big creep but that's what i always look for when it comes to i probably think that would be the first thing you won't pay would be your credit card yeah exactly right you know and you're the that's the easiest thing to get a line of credit basically from is a credit card at a 26 and a half percent interest rate sure. right it's way more difficult for you to go to your bank and get an eight percent line of credit exactly. to take actual cash out right mm, yeah. the credit card wants to be able to have a little bit of semblance of control but it's still that's the right. easiest way for you to get yourself into default and yeah. they start showing credit cards in their quarterly reports long before economies start turning, long before subprime mortgage crises right. is happening. Yeah. You know, like that there's defaults going on out there and more and more people are starting to miss bill payments. 
So we're not seeing it at the moment because right yeah. things are great. But just the, the reason, uh, the thing that I would look for with any, in the future, it is going to be. I right. mean, there's obviously going to be a changing Keep of the guard at swivel. some point. Yeah. Kraft Heinz KHC EPS of 89 cents, beat the street by seven cents. Price of 58.01 to end the week. Their revenue, though, ugh, six point three billion, but missed by twenty million and down 03 percent year over year. When we're seeing all this growth in revenue everywhere, right, to see a brand name like Kraft Heinz down a little bit, when we're, I think we're kind of expecting everybody to be, yeah, you know, they, they seem to be brimming with think, good, yeah. good, uh, good fortune and financial windfalls. That's right, and. It just seems like some companies maybe have missed the boat during these affluent times. Earnings still have a few. Yeah, we got a few more to go. Like, We're yeah. just over half, so. Sprint. Oh, they're yeah. getting hooked up with the earnings from earlier. T-Mobile. They're uh, they're trying to get a little thing going. They are. They are. Ticker symbol S. EPS of two cents beat by four cents. So we're supposed to make negative two cents. Not bad. Two cents, Not right? Bad, yeah. Revenues of eight point one billion beat by one hundred and ten million, down five point two percent year over year. CFO Michael Combs is the new CEO as they're working out a whole bunch of restructuring. Obviously, that's kind of going on. The CEO yeah. moved on to another position inside the company. Thirty nine thousand post paids added. Versus a loss of 118,000 postpaid last year in the same quarter. So that's a big turnaround. That is, yeah. From 118,000 lost to 39,000 added, one year removed. Not that Sprint's doing anything remarkable, but like we said, they tread water. They do. They do yeah. exist. They've got enough clients that the revenues keep them afloat, right? They're just. Yeah. They just. That's such that's a. That's it, though. Yeah. They're not. Everybody would, like, people buy them as speculation, basically, because it's mm. a cheap stock. Oh, yeah, it's like 5 Yeah, right? it's five twenty eight or something, right? Yeah. So people buy it spec. They expect it to run again, right? They want that to happen. They do that with, like, AMD we were talking about, right, too, right? right they, yeah. It's just one of those companies where, yeah, there's no growth in this, the company. No, no, really, there's no yeah. growth left. They owe too much money and have nowhere to go, and they just exist. Yeah, they're just there. Yeah, they just keep themselves afloat. Tesla, now here's a company, talk about keep yourself afloat, T-S-L-A, ticker symbol, EPS of negative $3.35. That beat by analyst estimates by 18 cents. Revenues of $3.41 billion beat by $110 million. That's up 26.3% year over year. The Model 3, they're expecting to be at a 25% plus margin by 2019. That's a lofty goal for Musk that and is. Tesla to be at. The Model 3s in April made 2,270 come off the production line. There's 450,000 in reservation right now. 450,000 Model 3s. 2,000 a week for three straight weeks. As I said, 2,270 yeah. the last week there. Aiming for 5,000 a week in the next two months. Yeah, July. That's not, yeah, July yeah, that's yeah. All, that, then they got to consider this Model Y. It's coming out 2020. Mm. They don't even know where they're going to build this. The Fremont facility apparently is full. Full, yeah. So I'm not sure where they're expecting to get this done. But they're expecting that as Model 3 production continues to ramp up, they're going to get to 10,000 vehicles quite quickly from five. Well, because I they're hope gonna, so. But... They're going to learn all the, the ways they can make things efficient. And that's apparently what they're doing is working out the kinks right now. And they do seem to continue to make headway. Right. Bernstein analyst got owned on that conference call. He should not have asked those questions. Yes, no. Don't mess with Musk. He, he was is, not playing. He's, I guess, the question the Bernstein guy asked was um, was on the front page of the first quarter review uh, newsletter that they sent out to all these guys. So they would have, he would have had the answer right in front of him. For sure, right. And Musk said, like, our company is the most shorts, shorted stock in the stock market, in the S&P right. 500. Right, these guys, the guy from Bernstein that he gave grief to, he said he's a sell side analyst. He thinks that Tesla's going down. He's trying to ruffle feathers. Right, and I understand that you've answered this question a million times, but when you run a publicly traded company, these analysts are asking questions for base. shareholder knowledge. Yeah. These shareholders and bondholders need to know what your uh, what your expenditures are, what your capex is. They they need to know the answers to the questions. Yeah. So you can't get offended 
if somebody asks you a question and it's boring or it's a bonehead question right. or whatever other phrase yeah. you want to use. Because right? as a face of a company like that, you can't act like a child. And he that was paid for it. They were down yeah. big time. They went down like 18%. Oh, well, yeah. That. When you act like that, that's why do you think your company's not doing too good right now? Well, the, the promising and under-delivering is definitely not helping. Right. But, you know, when people are... And he said, if you don't like my company, if you don't like risk, don't buy it. And I get all that, but people already know all that. For sure, we they do, yeah. People just want the answers. Like, those analysts are just doing their job. So I get, okay, maybe this guy specifically, him and Musk maybe have a bit of a relationship. Could have been, yeah. Right, it was just... It kind of boiled over at that point. But, yeah, no, you... you treat everybody like a gentleman not because they are but because you are mm. so you're the you're the leader there lead by example so breathe yeah, exactly. it out instead of i'm going to youtube and taking questions over there and your questions are boring and yeah they're boring me to death like you know have a little composure right right you're already the one floundering it almost seems like the youtube comment section is more for elon musk well yeah actual, just stroke his ego yeah the tell him how great everything is conference call yeah he didn't want yeah and the conference call is generic everybody from every company goes through the same call and yeah. the more analysts that cover your stock just repeat the yourself. more guys that are on the call and the yeah. more guys that ask the same questions every time mm -hmm. you should be happy you run a company so pop but powerful yes. and, and, and you know like popular that people are there covering it yeah. that people care that much You've got a lot of debt holders. You've got a lot of shareholders. I imagine he's under quite a bit of stress too. So, well, but but still, you got to be able to handle your stuff, right? Yeah, he might be under some stress. I mean, yeah. I guess there's been a lot of negative blowback in the media recently. Lately, yeah. And I'm not sure if it's all deserved, but you know, when it rains, it pours. And you've had so much good for so long, and you've got so much goodwill, and people gave you all these uh, free passes. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Sometimes you get a little back. And yeah. then to start running your mouth, well, you never know. Exactly. You could lose positive sentiment quickly. Bees are homes, ticker symbol BZH, EPS 36 cents, beat by 21 cents. What a beat. Revenues of 455 million, beat by 16.15 million. Uh, that revenue number is up 7% year over year. Price of $15.90 to close the week. Average selling price up 2.3% of Beezer Homes. Land sales and other revs up 74%. New home orders up 8.4%. Backlog up 15%. Everything up. Home builders have been doing well across the country. What an EPS beat. 36 no cents. Doubt. Beat by 21 cents. Yeah. That is an analyst whipping right there. Oh, yeah. Analysts were not very good this week. A lot of analysts had a lot of stuff away. That Apple call. Every yeah, analyst yeah. said that the guidance should be lowered for shipments in Q3. Sometimes I don't know where analysts get their, uh, get their uh, uh, what's the numbers from. Yeah, or whatever, sometimes yeah. you wonder if it's not a little bit of bias that sneaks in there and they're just... A little salty about someone. Trying to, yeah, 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 yeah trying sure. to crash your party a little bit. Canadian Natural Resources, ticker symbol CNX, EPS of 71 cents, beat by 3 cents. Revenues of 5.47 billion, beat by 360 million. Revs up 45.5% year over year. 35.54 to close a week will produce less than expected this spring. They thought it was going to be more. Their expectations are down. It was going to be, the estimate was for 1.13 million barrels a day their estimates for 1.05 million barrels a day as they say there's some bottlenecks and stuff out there that are really holding things back maybe that's why the price at the pump is so expensive uh i'll just take that for why it's so expensive is yeah when even, yeah, when even yeah. the companies come out and say like we could do more if you'd let us do more exactly dow dupont who's talking about breaking into two companies that's right, right. talking yeah, about yeah. we brought dow in and made it dow dupont and now they're thinking about spinning off Dow and DuPont into two separate chemical companies again. DWDP is the ticker symbol EPS of $1.12, beat by two cents. Revenues of $21.5 billion, beat by $80 million, 4.9% growth in the revenues year over year, 64.47 to close the week. Volume down 2% despite revenues up 4.9%. Delays in planting season in the Northern Hemisphere and Brazil took a 25% hit to the agriculture division Oops. in that quarter. Sales though up 17% year over year in material sciences unit and up 11% year over year in the specialty products unit. So Dow DuPont, there's a reason they're spinning them off. It's just too much stuff under one roof. For sure, yeah. They've got two very, very separate type of chemical companies. Yeah. We'll do but, this, you do that. And both 
good solid it, when they separate i mean you're talking about you mm. can make you can make a pretty stable investment in either one and yeah probably rest your head fairly easy at night oh sure unless oh, sure, their yeah. ceo starts headbutting the elderly like i'm pretty uh, sure yeah. it seems like he has it under control i hope right? he's got that under control yeah you yeah. never do that on the side though that's frowned upon that is frowned upon yeah, on the sundays on the you Sunday. can do that on sunday oh for sure yeah, yeah. yeah. church is Bombardier, Canadian aerospace and rail company, EPS of a cent, beat by a cent, revenues of 4.03 billion, beat by 150 million, 11.6% revenue growth year over year, price of 3.2 or $3.23. They're selling one of their uh, aircraft assembly plants, one of their sites to Canada's Public Sector Pension Investment Board for 635 million. Okay, uh, what are they gonna do with that? I don't know. I think I, when I read it, all I thought was uh, I read it a couple times. Like, the Canadian like government continues to subsidize Bombardier as Bombardier needs to unload assets to make cash. That's kind of what it sounds like to me. Right. Yeah. Because I don't know what they could be doing with that. I I have no it's idea. A, it's a large aircraft assembly facility. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. I have no idea. I'm. I'm Maybe they're gonna, they're gonna host WrestleMania there or something. Maybe that kind Cardinal of Health C A H ticker symbol a dollar thirty nine missed by twelve cents thirty three sixty thirty three point six three billion beat by one hundred and fifty million. That number is up five point seven percent in revenues year over year fifty three oh one to close the week. Pharmaceuticals up four point six, and they took a bit of a negative. Uh, impact on their EPS, which is the reason that they missed by 12 cents. Associated with one of their uh, divisions, Cordis, it it had a bit of a tax issue in accordance with the new tax laws, so they ended up taking a hit that I didn't think oh, they... Exactly. Maybe they didn't allocate this, because a lot of guys got a lot of those tax hits they knew they were going to take out of the way Q4 of right. last year. They took the big hits. Oh, that were all, you know, but apparently Cardinal Health took it in this quarter. Maybe they didn't know they were actually going to end up Maybe, such yeah. a big hit, but Cordis, the unit, uh, end up, they take, make medical devices and stuff. BCE, ticker symbol BCE. BCE. That's Bell. That that's, is Bell. That's Bell. They don't do my phone. No. Oh, no. That's Rogers. 80 yeah. cents of EPS. Missed by two. Revenues of 5.59 billion. Missed by 30 million. 4.7% year over year rev growth, though. Operating expenses up 13%. That's got to be, it's got to be pricey. Yeah. Average bill per user, though, is up 1.4%. So they're charging you more, too, because it's more pricey over at Bell now, apparently. apparently. Postpaid customers up to $8.47 million. Bell Wireless, 10.1% revenue growth. Bell Wireline, 3.6% revenue growth. Bell Media, down 0.3%. They up their guidance as well. Why wouldn't you? You're charging people more per bill. Yeah, exactly. Your operating expenses are going up. Yeah. So why not roll the dice? Exactly. Yeah. Why not? The telecom companies in Canada have no rush to get 5G available for us as we'll be playing Marvel Strike Force on a hamster on a wheel. That's right. Before we'll be playing on 5G. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we don't hear any any noise about that up here. No. Lots of talk down there, right? We talk yeah. about Trump potentially getting involved and the government mm -hmm. potentially helping some telecom companies yeah. get 5G up and running. Just to be competitive with China. Yeah. We don't hear that up here. I do have a 5G network. Do you? For Shaw, yeah. You have a 5G network 5G from network. Shaw. Yeah, yeah. Shaw Communications with the 5G. TELUS doesn't have it because I, I went to TELUS. They couldn't do it. Uh, Shaw. So you're telling like, yeah. me my internet here at my house is 5G. It is actually. It is. When you now log you in, say it that. says 5G. Yeah, yeah, now that you say that. Yeah. So why isn't that in the telecom? Why is it so easy to do through a router? But no it's idea. not easy to do in the sense of spectrum to get up there and put the right satellites in the sky. Wouldn't uh, it be basically the same technology, just bouncing the beam up there instead of down right. here? Yeah. Lazy. Nope. Lazy. That's what I attribute it right. to. Lazy. The infrastructure there could be just... And maybe they're sticking it to us. Maybe Or they maybe are. this podcast has gone a little long and I'm going half delusional. No, I don't think so. No, no it's, it's everybody it else. Us. Yeah, it is everybody yeah, else. Of course. What are you looking at? Yeah. Teva Pharmaceuticals, ticker symbol TEVA APS of 94 cents, beat by 28 cents. Revenues of 5.07 billion, beat by 270 million. That's off 10.3%, though, year over year. 
their restructuring plan to save $1.5 billion in 2018 and $3.8 billion by 2019 is doing very well and is on pace. Teva apparently needs to find a little more money to make some more pharmaceuticals. Good That's idea. Right. That sounds like the business they're in. Teva must Price, be, uh, make more friends. 1783 to close the week. Kellogg's. I can't eat carbs. No. That's no, what I can't. found out in the hospital. They told me, Cody, you uh, you can't eat carbs. You have a, a nutrient absorption issue in your intestine. No more oh. carbohydrates. So Kellogg, kind of kind of off the table for me. Definitely off the table. I, I don't think kind. I, I think love definitely. cereal, too. Oh, Captain Crunch is pretty good. I just have to eat today. bacon now, all day. Just bacon. Oh, that's such a shame. I know. Poor you. It's tough. Sometimes there's cheese on the bacon or sour cream or, or avocado. It's really rough. So delicious. Though. I know. I'm having a tough time. Trust Anyways, Kellogg reported earnings, earnings on their cereal, cereal that I can't eat. So knock me out of this rev number for next quarter. Because, for sure, yeah. Yeah, the three or four boxes I buy a month are not <laughs> going to be allocated anymore. Ticker symbol K, EPS, $1.19, beat by 11 cents. Revenues of $3.4 billion, beat by $100 million, up 4.6% year over year. Price, fifty nine eighty to close the week. Organic sales growth of 0.6%. U.S. snacks, though, down 4.1%. That is something I would be concerned about, much like we see the Kraft Heinz number down. Yeah. Yeah, U.S. snack business. That should be where snacks. You're, that's got to be where you're strong. You think so? The United States loves to snack. Oh, for sure. Have you seen the BMI average in the United States? There's, yes. They're hefty down there. Oh, they definitely they are, are. They are snackers. They're don't, one of the biggest in the world. Don't give me excuses, Kellogg. Yeah. Sell yeah. those snacks. The WWE won't give you excuses. They'll give you a chair shot. Ticker symbol, WWE. EPS, 18 cents, beat by 5 cents, revenues of, of paltry, 187.7 million, missed by 6.64 million and down 0.4% year over year. But media, up 10.1%, live events, down 4%. Really? You guys aren't drawn, bro. Nobody wants to see Roman Reigns. That's right. Yeah. Right? Nobody wants to see these guys that you got. You keep pushing guys that aren't very good. What do you expect? Yeah, yeah. So you got the networks up considerably, and hours watched on the network are up a multitude. Mm -hmm. But as far as live events go, because then you take a look, consumer products, that's all the good stuff they sell. T-shirts right. and all that down 33%. Ouch. Yeah, not during the Stone Cold era. No. No, you get an no. NWO shirt back in 96, you'd be selling that thing. You could buy it for 10 bucks, sell it on the street for 50. For sure. Absolutely. For sure. Now the WWE can't sell their own merch. They can't build stars. No. No, no. they keep forcing the wrong guys down. It almost seems like their time has almost passed. Like that golden age of When I say golden age of wrestling, I think of like the 80s and like the early 90s, mid 90s. But I think almost they're more like this, they're passed. more like Cirque du Soleil now than they are like any, or Barnum and Bailey. They're yeah. it's predictable. Before yeah. there was still the question of if it was real. Yeah. And the guys who seemed to get over the most were the guys that were also allowed to be themselves and not so scripted. And That's they were right, the ones yeah. that connected. It seemed like with the audience on a much more uh, you know like an emotional level. Yeah, 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 yeah. On that, and it's not like that anymore. It's no. very much acted out. It just seems like and, everybody's and, expendable. And you're very detached from those guys as individuals. Yeah. You don't really care. Yeah. And that's probably the reason why you're down so much. But the network's up. Network subs up 5% to 1.56 million. And like I said, the viewer, like the hours, the viewership's yeah. up considerably because the network has all the old stuff. It's got all the good stuff, the documentaries. That's right. You can yeah. watch the highlights, the good things. You got to watch Raw every week. You're going to start drinking. <laughs> Cigna, ticker symbol C I, EPS of $4.11, beat by 72 cents. Revenues of $11.4 billion, beat by $350 million. That rev number up 10.3%. Year over year, price at the end of the week, 171.17. Premiums, 10.4%. Fees up 8.4%. Net investment income up 8.6%. And the mail order pharmaceutical business up 1%. Cigna, that's how you do an earnings call. No, too shabby. I think we only have like seven more. Do you think, ev I'm pretty sure everyone is asleep. They yeah, put this oh, podcast sure. on before they laid down. Yeah. They're well asleep now. We could talk about anything. Oh, for sure. Like, they're not paying attention. No. Like, oh, it no. They're done for the night. Yeah, well, they're absolutely out. Oh, yeah. didn't. They maybe hung on till Tesla's earnings. Maybe. But I'm sure I lost them yeah. somewhere in one of those headline jumps. Oh, I'm sure on. they did. Yeah. yeah. They 
they tuned out. Maybe sure. maybe my mom's still here listening. Maybe. She's probably long past For the that most too. part, I think people just went through the description and just looked for the one of the games. Okay, bear right. with me. Couple other ones. SNC Lavalin, engineering company up here in Canada, EPS 77 cents, revenues of 2.43 billion, up 31.4% year over year. Manulife Financial, 64% EPS, beat the street by two. Those were just very minor. Threw them in there. That's, yeah. Yeah, they're companies that are a little more local to us. Manulife's all, all over the world, but For sure, yeah. very much uh, Canadian. So I figured Manulife get thrown in. GoPro, here's a company that was doing really well. People had high expectations. They just didn't get with the times quick enough. And GoPro, in a matter of a couple of years, fell by the wayside. Ticker symbol GPRO, EPS of negative 34 cents. Beat the street, though, by 4 cents. Revenues of $202 million. That beat the streets estimate by 17.8 million, but down 7.6% in revs year over year because they're selling less of those GoPro cameras because right. cameras are getting more and more easy to obtain through every phone and device Definitely, that you have. Yeah, yeah. And that fisheye lens on that GoPro. Sucks. It was like, I got one of those when they, like the GoPro Hero 3 Plus, I think I had, maybe like five years ago. Mm. And like, I thought, man, this is going to be cool. It's a little camera. You're going to end the fisheye thing. It's great for yeah. like action sports. You can adjust it, huh? But no, you can't get rid of it. It's not great for if you're hanging out with your kids and That's you want to see your kids playing in the yard because it yeah. looks like you're looking through a fishbowl. Activision Blizzard, they have a couple of games. StarCraft, Warcraft, Call of Duty. I think I've heard of them before. Destiny, Candy Crush. They, uh, yeah, they're kind of at the absolute top of the video game industry. They reported earnings. Ticker symbol ATV, EPS of 65 cents, beat by 15 cents. Revenues of 1.38 billion, beat by 60 million, up 15% year over year. The, um, the Dow leaked details early of Activision Blizzard. So there was a mistake. They, they say the Dow is what they said originally. Activision Blizzard came out in the conference call and said it was the Wall Street Journal. But they had the... The quarter already there, and somebody leaked it out. So it's trading got oh. stopped on Activision Blizzard for the balance of the day because the price was coming down. They thought there was some bad news that they were reporting before right, the right, quarter, right. but it was just that the quarter got leaked early. So yeah. they, they resumed trading, obviously, at the end of the day. Candy Crush remains the number one and number two mobile game for gross in the U.S. for the second straight quarter. Number one and number two over the Activision Blizzard platform, 374 million monthly active users. Holy. There are a few, there's over 200 just on Call of Duty. Yeah. There are a lot of people sure. playing Activision, but they got a lot of people's attention. Streaming, yeah. guys, streaming guys should have gotten to video games. That's gonna be- Definitely, the, Yeah, yes. that's the new way you get people's attention. CB, CBS. CBS, ticker symbol CBS, EPS of $1.34, beat by 15 cents, revenues of $3.76 billion, beat by $120 million, up 12.6% year over year, price at the end of the week, $53.17, revenues for the entertainment segment up 15.7%, cable 12.1%, publishing down 0.6%, local media up 1.5%, advertising up 8.1%, and affiliate and subscription fees up 16.3% as CBS had a great quarter, was the leader in the S&P 500 uh, for leaders on Friday for biggest increase, up like 7%. Nice. Good earnings. Good for them, good good for them yeah. Kind of fly under the radar. When you talk about that's all these true, big media yeah. companies, you forget CBS, CBS is out there, and that's right. They beat on everything there. Alibaba, B-A-B-A, -A, that's BABA, ticker symbol. EPS of 91 cents, beat by 3 cents. Revs, 9.87 billion. Beat by 510 million, up 61%. Wow. Year over year. You want to know a story about Alibaba's yes. revenues? Up over 50% every quarter, eight consecutive quarters. That's how you do growth. Core commerce up 62%. Cloud computing up 103%. Digital media and entertainment up 34%. Innovation up 8%. Annual active users just in China, 552 million. It grew 37 million. Wow. In that quarter, we were looking at Alibaba and Tencent earlier. We were. Which are the two big competitors between the yeah. two. They're, those are the two Amazons over in Asia Pacific. And a yes. lot of people probably know who Alibaba is, don't know who Tencent is. But these two companies are in so many different industries and yes, they're doing they are. so well and have the backing of basically a $1.1 billion uh, 
population country yeah, that are yeah. all rooting for their own bad base yeah, right? yeah straight up these and jack ma that runs alibaba is a smart guy oh he's a smart cookie they know what they're doing yeah. it's a good quarter like usual alibaba it's really tough to Russia. hate on it. Yeah, yeah tough to hate on it the only thing that would hold me up from an investment in it is just because they're so entrenched in an industry where you never really know how much right. government hands are involved in Look at the murky waters. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Celgene, the last one of the day. CELG EPS of 205, beat by nine cents. Revenues of 3.54 billion, beat by 80 million. That's up 19.4% year over year. Net product sales up 19.6% year over year at Celgene. That is a nice number when you're trying to sell products in the pharmaceutical yeah. industry. Net product sales as a whole up almost 20% year over year. That wasn't bad. No, that wasn't bad. No. It could have been better. I could have. Yeah, you're slacking a bit, I still, think. Still, yeah. We're, it's yeah. Two, two hours and 42 minutes now. Yeah, yeah. It's coming off being sick. It was laid up. For sure, yeah. yeah, yeah. Getting, knocking the uh, rust off. Yeah, got to get That's back in the groove. Is. Yeah, you know, yeah. kind of came into this week a little flustered. Had had to catch up and do a bunch of work and make sure we had everything mm, ready yeah. because I hate when we miss a week. So you're not really like in that mindset where you're ready to be, you know, like easy going and laid back. You really yeah. want to make sure you're getting everything in. So I like earnings when I knew there was at least 41 that I had to do. Yeah. I was like, okay, it's time to hunker down. So like after a while, reading all these numbers started to become like reading Japanese. No, but for sure. Missing the week, I felt like it was prudent that we got it done. So I didn't feel like I was on my A game as far as my delivery goes. But I think that rust will probably be gone in very short order. And, very short, uh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was another episode of This Week on Wall Street. I'm Cody from Wall Street Breakdown. I'm Anthony from Wall Street Breakdown. Thanks for stopping by. You didn't make it this far in the podcast. If you did, we owe you a hug because I'm amazed we made it this far. So God bless. Have a good week. We'll see you next week for another podcast.